Hi everyone, as you all know, my name is Lady Jasmine C. And today I want to say thank you to everybody, most of all those who had faith in me, who believed in me, who patiently waited till this day for me to come and speak on behalf of myself to all the good Nigerians out there who during this trying period showed their immense support by checking up on me, calling to know how I'm doing. I want to say thank you to everybody. So today I'm going to be talking about what has transpired this entire time. The past three months has been, I can't say it has been hell, but in every situation, I want to say, I want to give thanks to God. I said I was not going to talk about this issue until Daddy gets back to his feet. And glory be to God, he's been discharged and recuperating. Um, a lot has happened, not just the event of the past few months. A lot has happened, and I would like to share more light on how I got involved, how things got to this point. And I'm not talking because I need people to sympathize with me. No, that's not the essence of this. I'm talking because I feel like I have been abused. I have been used. And I hope you guys are patient enough to at least listen to the entire story. Because it means a lot to me for people to know what really transpired, what really happened. Then if after listening to me, you feel like, oh, I'm wrong. Fine. I'll let I'll leave the judgment to you people. So how did I get involved in all this in the first place? Um, firstly, how did I get involved with this family? The John Okafor family, Mr. Ibu family. The first and most important question I get all the time from people, mostly on my comment section, is Oh, don't she have a family? Don't she have parents? Uh, leave this family alone and all of that. I would like to start addressing from those kind of comments. So many years ago, my dad passed on me, so rest in peace. He was in Nigerian army. He was a very good friend to Mr. Ibu, who is now a father figure in my life. When my dad passed on, Mr. Ibu himself was at the barrier. Ever since then, he has played the role of a father figure in my life. Not for once have I ever needed somebody as a father that he was not there for me. So fast forward to 2018, I left the country. I left Nigeria. And then I went to look for greener pasture outside the country. Things were working out for me. I was doing good. I was doing fine. Later on, I relocated to Cyprus where I was studying law. Fast forward to 2020, Daddy started, Daddy, in person of Mr. Abel, started writing me on WhatsApp, requesting for financial assistance. I was really surprised because before I left this country, he was doing well. If not, if he wasn't at the peak of his career, he was doing absolutely well. He has exotic cars. Everything was okay for him. So in 2020, when he started reaching out to me that he needed money for certain things, I was really surprised. Certain times I would send 50000 5000 2000 as much as I can. I have friends then in Cyprus that can attest to it. I think I have one friend, Ventura, Another friend, Otonye, these are people I know that can attest to it because then, even when I don't have as much, I would borrow from them or I would get from them to send to him. So at some point, it was getting, it was quite disturbing because I know when I left this country, he was doing very, very okay. I started asking questions. I asked him, what exactly is happening in your life right now? For you to be asking for the least 50000 10000 5000 are you sure everything is okay? That was the first time he mentioned to me that he was sick and he was in Abuja. 
I then asked him, how about your wife? How is the children? How is everybody doing? It's been long since I heard from any of them. He said, uh, his wife is in um, his wife is in Lagos. That he has been in Abuja for close to two years now. And I was like, if you're sick, the best place to be is your home in Lagos. Why Abuja? He didn't really say much. So I told him to send me his wife's number that I would like to hear from her. It's been a while. I'd like to hear from her. Let me know what's happening in in their life and all of that. Let me also understand why he was asking for those kind of financial help if things has really gotten that bad. Because it's I was in shock. It also surprised me. So he later sent her number. I called her. I asked her how she was doing. She said everything was not well. I could remember that day. She The first day I contacted her after a very long time, she said everything is not well that her husband has left the house for over two years. He has abandoned the children and everything. I was surprised to hear that from her. And then she said that that, that very day, she started sending me videos. I think the last time they called me out that I was on um, that the freeze life, I made reference to that. And I'm sure those evidence will still be on the live because I've changed my phone several and my phone formatted. So I might not have some of those evidence. But I still know that if I go to my iCloud, I will still see some of them, which I'll be posting while the, the live, the video goes on. So around that period, she was crying over the phone. When I asked her how things were going, she said um, that daddy in person of Mr. Ibu has left the house for over two years, abandoned her with the kids, that things were really bad for her. Even that day, she sent me a video of... Um, Nepal people cutting the light as of when I caught her. The Nepal people were there. She went to her car. She showed me her car that there was no fuel in her car. Her car was in a very bad condition. That in fact, that if I don't intervene, no, 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 no. The Nepal people will cut the light and there will be no light for the uh, uh, there will be no light in the house. And the children were drinking Gary. That there was no food in, in the house for the children. That they were drinking Gary. That things are causing real bad. That since that he was in Abuja, he was not really in a very good state to help them and support her and for her she's not doing any work she she according to her she she married him she has not had, had any job she has not done anything she has no means of sustaining the family i mean she totally depends on him to be able to sustain the family and pay school fees for the children so i said okay ah me i'm in cyprus though i'm studying i showed her some of my school stuff i'm studying law this is where i am we're trying to catch up with each other and i told her this is where i am right now but i'll try and see if i can raise at least hundred thousand and send to her so that she can sort out the little she can solve she said okay that day i sent her hundred thousand the proof of that is what the proof of that hundred thousand i sent her is in the live video i the previous live video i did with daddy freeze I sent her hundred thousand naira. She called me. She thanked me. She said that hundred thousand will go a very long way for her. I said okay. Subsequently, I will keep in touch. That was my first encounter with her after a very long period of time. But that was my first time talking to her after a very long period of time. After like after I left the country and everything. So from there, she started chatting me every day. We were we were talking. Subsequently, she would send me for every single time we we're having conversation. It was about the issues in the house and all of those things. And, and at the point, she started complaining to me that she's not able to reach daddy on the phone, in person of Mr. Ibu, that when she calls him in Abuja, he doesn't pick and all of that. So she asked me to call daddy on her behalf and talk to daddy that daddy should um, send something for her and the kids. And I've been supporting her in the little way I can during that period. My friends in Cyprus, I, have, I, can, I can call their names here. I'm sure they, most of them are still alive, although I'm not in contact with some of them because I've left Cyprus for a while. They, they are aware, some of them are aware because when I don't have, I'll ask my friend, oh, please help me. I want to send, they know, they know how close I was to the family and how I have, I, how I was always concerned about the family. So at one point I said I was coming back to Nigeria because at that point I was um, dating someone and we're talking about getting married. So I had a reason to come to Nigeria and I told her, I said, look, I'm coming to Nigeria. When I come to Nigeria, we'll sit down and talk. They will know how to solve some of all these issues that is going on, you know. So I was also talking to daddy's son, Valentine, that was in South Africa. I was talking to so many people in the family that, that period. So when I came back to Nigeria, I was supposed to come to Lagos. In fact, she was supposed to meet me at the airport, but she couldn't meet up. And then I told her I was going straight to Abuja. I traveled with one other lady, one of their family friends. So we went to Abuja. On getting to Abuja, 
that he was really sick. He was really, really sick. That's the first video that went viral on social media that was giving him medicine. I said, Daddy, take this medicine, take the medicine. I am sure I'll put it on the screen during the course of the video. So Daddy was really sick. The condition I met him was really bad. I have a lot of videos we made that day. Asked him what was happening. He said he's really down for the past two years. He don't know what is happening. I said, why haven't you gone home if things are really that bad? Go home and stay with your wife. At least she will take care of you. Now that you are here in this hotel, the name of the hotel you was then was Nana Suits. You people can go and find out how, how long that he stayed in Nana Suits. I know I heard when I came, I heard he lived in so many hotels in Abuja before finally living in Nana Suits. I'm sure people, people that are watching this video, some people will be able to go there and make inquiries. It was in Nana Suits Hotel that I went and found that day. So in that Nana Suits Hotel, there are some other people that were there, some other actors. During the course of this video, I'll be mentioning some names. So if, if there's anything I'm saying that is lie, people can go and make inquiries, you know. I didn't want to come and say anything, but I've, it's, it, the things, things have gotten to the part where I have to speak up, and I have to speak up my truth. I have to say my truth the way it is. That is the essence of telling this story. The way it is. If after knowing my truth, you people still deem it fit to condemn me, it's fine. But at least let it be that I, sp I speak let it be that I said something. Let it be that I stood up for myself. So when I arrived at that Nana Hotel with that, with this the lady that is a family friend to, to them, that he was really sick. Then I did a video of him being sick and I put it on social media. That video caught the attention of, of so many ni good Nigerians. And then people started reaching out. Ah, and what's happening to Mr. Ebu? It's been so long we heard about Mr. Ebu. What's happening to all our old our, our, our old Nollywood actors? We haven't been seeing Mr. Ebu. Nobody has been hearing about him for a while now. And there were some good people that were around him around that period. They knew he was sick, but they did not know he was that bad. Benedict Johnson, a Nollywood actor, was there. Labista was there. There's one other man. I don't really know him mutually, but I met him there. It was one of the people that was helping him then, and Bala, Mr. Bala. They had a program running, one, a, one, a political party program that was running on that period. I can't really say much about it because I came and met, met them in the middle of it. In fact, I later found out that they were the one even sustaining his hotel bill, his food and everything. So when they saw that video, they rushed, they came, and Eddie Johnson came over, Labista came over, and some, some people in Nollywood, they came over, and immediately, it wasn't up to... An hour, let me say an hour, 30 minutes. They rushed him to the hospital. They rushed him to the hospital, Zenith, uh, Medical, Zenith Kidney and Medical Center. When they took him to the hospital, I believe ben Benedict Johnson, by the grace of God, he's alive and healthy. He knows most of, he, he, he should be able to relate to most of the things I'm going to say during this period in Abuja. They took him to the hospital. The doctor saw that they, they saw his former medical reports from the previous hospital he was. And they, they, what the doctor said that day, I won't forget, he said, if this medical report that they came with is the state of him, of daddy right now, that I means things are really bad. And then I can remember then, the, if the people that were there can attest to the father, daddy was saying, that is near, that is near, that is near. I was rebuking him. I said, that is not near, you're not dying, you're not dying anytime soon. So the hospital, they started, they said they had to make a deposit of a particular amount of money. Benedict Johnson and Labista ran, were running around with some other people, the Bala man, they were running around, they were able to raise a certain amount of money and then they made deposit at that hospital, Zenith Hospital. So they started checking that. I cannot actually give details of his medical condition because I feel like that those are things that are actually personal to him. But I can actually he said to some extent the medical the medical condition was really bad it wasn't a very good report so they started checking him all over they had to admit him they admitted him in that hospital for at least three months and the people that took care of the bill that time as far as i know was that um, group of people that were sustaining him at that um, hotel so when i came the first thing i asked i called the wife i said look i'm here at the hospital in abuja the condition is really bad if it's possible for you to come, come. She now said ah, that she doesn't have transport, or that she doesn't have money for flight, she can't come, that they said we're going to arrange money for her to come and all of that. I said, okay. So I spoke to daddy. I said, eh, we need to find a way for your wife to come so that she can actually take care of you. 
daddy said clearly to me that day that he doesn't want his wife to come to the hospital that day that if his wife come he's going to die i'm not the only one he said that to la Bista, you're still alive benedict johnson you're still alive if you people know the truth and you want to be silent about it because you don't want to get involved in family issues i can understand but i know very well that you people know what happened that day at that hospital we pleaded with daddy pleaded with daddy pleaded with him for him to allow his wife to come to the hospital he said no and he gave his reasons he gave his reasons he made some some very strong allegations about their marriage about having um, catching a, about um having caught his wife having affairs so many times and all of that which i called the wife i told him i said this is what daddy said this is what he said he doesn't want you to come that he caught you having an affair and all of those things she said oh that about that that is not true that she never had any affair i'm not here to say whether she had affair or she never had affair because i wasn't there but i'm quoting what daddy said that day the main reason why he said he didn't want her to come to abuja he said he didn't want her to come that for the past two years he hasn't seen her and she affirmed to me that for the past two years she has not seen him they were only talking on the phone and most of the times he doesn't pick the call that most of the time he's strangers people that she, she doesn't know that were picking the call so daddy didn't want her to be there I was the one pushing for her to come there. I was the one pushing for her. I told her, okay, come. This is the hospital. She asked me where the hospital address was. I said, come. And I told her, okay, you know what you're going to do? Find a way. Source out a way. Find flight ticket and come. When you come, then we can now um, find a way and raise the money and balance you back. Because if that is giving his reason, saying this is the reason why he doesn't want you to come, I cannot go against that will. So finally... The wife actually talked about that issue. She said, she herself said that daddy has been telling a lot of people that she has had it from so many places that she's having an affair. But in reality, that it were just mere accusations, that it was here says he was hearing from a lot of people that she never had any affair. I believed whatever she said that period. I believed her. I had no I had no reason to doubt what she was saying. So I just I just as an adult, I felt like, oh, maybe it's just normal misunderstanding between uh, husband and wife that they were in turn settled later. So later on, she came to the hospital. When she came to the hospital, the first thing that they asked me was, ah, who brought her here? I said, that this person is your wife. Now, you cannot be asking me who brought her here. Then she later said, um, her friend, one of her friends, which I'll be mentioning her name in the course of this um, video because a lot of things that happened in that family, she knows. If she's willing to come out and speak up one day, it's on her. If she wants to know the truth and still be silenced about the truth, it's still on her. I will not force anybody to come and speak up or force anybody to come and stand up for me. I won't, that's what I won't do. So that her friend, now she, according to the wife, when she landed in Abuja, after I sent the address, she said it was that her friend, Ogadima, that actually booked the flight ticket for her. And then she came there. There was one other lady that was there that they later had issue with, whatever, I don't know. The later had issue with the lady that was there in the hospital. So when she came to the hospital, it was me, the other lady that she later had issue with, and daddy at first in the hospital. Before she came, I was the one in the hospital taking care of daddy when I came back. Then subsequently, Labista will come, Benedict Justin will come. Some people were coming, some other people from Nollywood, and some people that were there in that hotel that he was lodged at. The people that were looking after him were, were, were paying for his food and his hotel bill. Those people were also frequenting the hospital before she came. So when she came, I stepped down. I was just there. Whatever she wants, she would send me a message like her daughter. She was even calling me her daughter, introducing me. She was the one that started introducing me to people as her daughter. Oh, this is my daughter. This is what she has done and all of that. I was working with the flow. I never had issue with her at any point. I was very loyal to her. Never at any point had any issue with her. So, daddy was not in that hospital for about two weeks. Then his son, his son later came and joined us. Um, Daniel, his son, his second son, sorry, not the one in South Africa, his second son later came and joined us in the hospital. So it was me, daddy, his wife, his son and the, at, at the hospital. Um, subsequently, people started coming to the hospital to visit him. Yes, Madam Mona Lisa came to visit him in Hollywood address. She was the then secretary of EGN. A lot of people came, started coming to the hospital to visit him after the, the post I made went viral. Some people were contributing directly to him. Some people were giving him cash directly to him. At no situation was any money that was given to him taken by me or given to me. They were giving it to him, either him directly or the wife. I was just there in the picture trying to assist with everything. So after staying in that hospital for months, 
Daddy finally recovered. Glory be to God. Myself, his son, the wife, we, we now started traveling. I cannot remember the sequence of the travel, but I know we went to Abu, I'm well, sorry, we went to, yes, from Abuja, we went to Enugu together. We went to Calabar together to see that her friend, I booked ticket for her, Auntie Ogadima. We went to Owere together. We attended with our Dominic's wedding together, which he introduced me to so many people as his daughter. And the wife was introducing me to so many people as her child. We were traveling together. After all those travel, we now later came back to Lagos. When we came back to Lagos, we didn't go to the house directly because the wife said the house was not in a good condition. Water was already entering the house. She said the house was so messed. So we all went to lodge in a hotel. Went to lodge in a hotel. In that hotel, Daddy and his wife were lodged. I was lodged separately. After staying in that hotel for a particular period of time, I think for a week, then we now went to the house. Now, when we went to the house, around that period, Daddy was still, he just barely recovered. He was still trying to get back to his feet. When, while we were living, I think, um, Benedict Johnson and Bala, his group, yes, Benedict Johnson, Bala and Labista, their group, in that um, particular thing they were doing that time. I think it was something related to politics. I, I wasn't really well informed about whatever they were doing, but they supported him with some amount of money. Even the day they wanted to give him the money, the wife said they should hand over the money to her, which they did. So she was the one in charge of the money they gave, they gave to him. After that, we went to, from the hotel, we went to his house. So when we got to the house, I told them I wanted to, then I just came back to Nigeria. I haven't actually connected to my own mom that was i haven't even visited my mom my mom was in lagos she was calling me i told her the situation of things when i came because she knows him very well and they talk my mom is also from enugu they are from a very close place so she knows him very well she knows him for years she they are in fact they are very close so my mom was also communicating my mom said okay be patient when it's fine you can come back so for that period of time my, my parents my family are there they were doing fine they were communicating with me and i had just recently got married i had just recently got married to my to the american the guy i met on tiktok the american guy i'll be talking about his story in another video that's another because when everything happened, I never ever said anything about anything. But now people are pushing me to talk. I've been quiet and people are pushing me to talk. They want me to really talk. I'm the kind of person that when things happen, I like things to be where they are. I like to move on from things. But this situation, I don't see myself moving on from it until I talk about it. And I'm, by talking about it, I mean telling my story exactly the way it is. And if I say anything on this video, anybody thinks that what I'm saying is a lie, I have proof of everything I'm going to say in this video. I have proof of them, either in video forms, either in picture forms, sc screenshot, chat. I have proof. I'm, I'm someone that is very detailed in whatever I do in life. So I have proof of whatever I'm going to be saying in this video. So around that period while we were in there in the house, my then husband, who is now my ex-husband, Said he wanted to come to Nigeria, and that would have been the first. That would have been like the first time he is coming to Nigeria. I said, okay, I had to go and rent house then. So I went to rent a house in Lagos. I took a five bedroom flat in Lekki. Before I left Cyprus, most people that knew me in Cyprus knew that I had a logistic business working for me, two four seven logistic. Yes, I had a logistic business working for me. I had things working for me very fine, and I was doing very okay, and I was very comfortable, very very comfortable. The logistic business I was doing, I was making over 3 million naira weekly. So I was making a whole lot of money from that logistic. I was the only one doing the business I was doing in Cyprus as of the time I left Cyprus. Nobody else was doing that business. So when I came, I was okay. I was fully loaded. Then after staying with daddy in the house for a period of time, when daddy was recuperating, him and his wife started having issues. The son was there. The son can attest to it. Even the children, the younger children, they can attest to it. They were always constantly having issues. And the issues they were having was not far-fetched from money issues. The fact that she would want to do something and she'll come and ask daddy for money, knowing fully well that he's not working and there's no other source of income, daddy will start complaining, okay, I'm not working, where do you want this money to come from? And as far as I know, from what both of them told me, from what daddy told me and from what she told me, they were married for years and that marriage was very okay 
until that is started encountering money issues when he wasn't getting jobs in his career not only um, the the acting team was not paying him he wasn't getting jobs he wasn't getting endorsements so he was just there so the money was not coming forth because while she was in that marriage, she was not working. So the only source of income in that marriage was daddy. And at the point that daddy was not, was not able to financially sustain the marriage, that's when the issues started coming up. So while I was there, the few issues that I know occurred in my presence, I, uh, the, the few issues that I can, I can say, I can attest to that happened in my presence were mostly the issues of money. When she would say, okay, I need money for this. I mean, need money for that. At some point, daddy was even telling her to, that the school fees they were paying for the, the kids were too expensive that um, they should actually change the school for the children so that he can pay in some way that he can afford. You know, those were the kind of issues that were causing, the, cause, bringing problem that time. And the problem, I was, the, 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 the problem I'm talking about is not like just that uh, they were having, they were always, 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 quarreling in, in the loudest of their voice. I've never witnessed daddy hitting her or with, uh, witnessed her beating daddy, but they were always fighting at the, at the top of their voice that daddy would, at some point, he would start complaining, oh, my heart, my chest, and all of those things. He would start complaining as if those things were actually affecting him directly. So then, aside from that job I did in, in Cyprus, I was doing TikTok. Even when I traveled to Gambia and some other African countries, I was doing TikTok. And then people that knows what TikTok is all about knows that TikTok is one social media platform that pays very well if you're very creative and you know what you're doing. If you go on TikTok, you like you have a lot of people gifting you and all of that. So I started telling her, I said, okay, now that daddy is not working, uh, this TikTok thing, I showed her how I was making my income and all, all of that. I said, this TikTok thing might actually be something that would work for you people. She said, okay, she's very interested that I should create a, an account for her. I should teach her how she can do the TikTok thing, which I, I did. I politely did. I opened the TikTok account for her. I even went as far as growing her TikTok account to 114,000 followers that it is today. I was doing content for her. Even while we were in Abuja, I was doing content for her. I was shooting the videos. Everything on that TikTok platform till it grew to that amount of followers it has was all my doings. Then later on, I started doing daddy TikTok. She said I should also help daddy, bring daddy back to social media that people don't know uh, that daddy has gone out of the limelight. Maybe he can start having a job. That is how I started creating content with daddy, bringing him back to the limelight so that he can at least afford the least school fees. And I, as I speak, I know there are so many people in the industry that can attest to the fact that I was not the only one daddy was calling and asking for finance. Because when I came, I heard a lot of stuff. A lot of people were telling me that he was asking for finance for as many people as possible. People, everybody knew that the time I came back to Nigeria, that he was at his lowest. He was at his lowest. He was asking for the least 2,000 naira from anybody that cared to sustain his family. He was asking for the least 1,000 naira. He was asking for money from anybody, be it a stranger, anybody. So a lot of people knew that. I was not the only person that knows that daddy was at his lowest when I came back to Nigeria, that daddy wasn't doing fine at all financially. So that was how I was able to set up the TikTok thing for both her and, and daddy. And when I came back, daddy's um, Instagram account was hacked. His account was hacked. He was not active on Instagram. In fact, his account was hacked while he was in the hospital. And we later find out who hacked his account. It's also somebody in the Nollywood. I don't want to mention name because the case was taken to oh, um I am sorry, the case was taken to Aja Police Station. I was the one that found out because I was chatting the account and then the person was chatting me. He sent details to send money. I later found out who the person was. I was the one that reported the case to Aja Police Station, paid for every day investigation to go on. And when the investigation go, uh, went on, they tracked the person and they brought the person to to, to Aja Police Station for me to recover that account. There's this girl they called Jenna, Jenna of Insta and Jenna of, on Instagram. So I paid Jenna 500000 on Instagram to help recover that is account. Now, they recovered that is account, an Instagram, uh, Instagram account. After they recovered the Instagram account, which before I paid that money, I told the wife, I said, okay, see, 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 how are we going to raise the money? She was like, mm, let's forget about the account that... Um, it's something we can always do that that money is not important to pay that kind of money in that car. I remember that day I called my immediate younger brother. I said, please, can you loan me 500000 so The next day I'll be able to send it to you. Let me just quickly solve this problem. He did. I show, she was there when the money came and everything, and we solved that problem. 
And when the guy was arrested, he later compensated daddy with, I think, one point something million naira. Uh, yes, and that money was given to him and not me. And I, I didn't bother. So subsequently, while I was doing my TikTok thing, I was also sustaining the family. The, 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 most of the things they buy in the house, most of the things they use in the house, I was sustaining them from that money. Then the, the daddy later joined in the TikTok stuff. The money that was making from the daddy's TikTok that he was doing, most of it was going to the wife. Some of it was going to daddy. They were solving their, their family problem. She cannot say she did not use TikTok money to pay school fees at some, at some point. I mean, TikTok, I was doing, I was doing with daddy. She has never for one day come and show her face on that TikTok. I was the one running the TikTok account with daddy. She cannot say she has not used the money from TikTok to put food on that on their table. She cannot say they did not use money from the TikTok uh, money to, to do things that would benefit their family. While I was running her TikTok account, I was running daddy's TikTok account and I was running my account. At some point, I was choked. I had to hand over her own TikTok account for, to her and tell her, okay, this is how to go about it. Let me focus on myself and focus on daddy. She now said, okay, but sometimes try to carry me along. I said, okay, no problem. I'll be carrying you along. Like when we're doing starting videos, you will join us. You go to the page, you see even on daddy's page, some video is three or four, some video is just me and daddy and some video is me and her. You know, so things were going quite smooth. There was no reason for malice. There was no confusion anywhere. In fact, at some point, I was more closer to her than I was with daddy. Because there are certain conversations that I and her have that I cannot, I have with her that I cannot have with daddy. So while the issue between herself and daddy was going on, um, I, at some point, she started raising, bringing up issue of daddy selling his property, some of his property he had so that they can be able to fit some bills as they were not meeting up with bills so at that point daddy was so i don't i don't know for some reason he was unwilling to sell property maybe he was hoping that something a job would come al along something somewhere that things will work out eventually you know and also when we came back daddy complained about the cars he left in the house that all the cars were sold and none of them were remitted to him in fact, that was the first issue they had in the house then. He was asking about the cars, what happened to all the cars, that all the cars were sold, and none of the money, he, he made it a, quite an issue, that none of the money was remitted to, to him. With that, I cannot say much about, because she's the only one that know what, knows what happened to the car. I'm only making reference to it, because even in Daddy Free's life, the first time she called me out, the first time anybody in this life ever called me out was that she was the first person that ever called me out in this life. I've never had to have issue with anybody on this on social space. So the first time anything like that happened was when she came out and said, oh, this is, I'll trace it back. That's why I'm starting this, this whole story from the beginning so that I'll link it up to how we got to this place. Daddy came out and also made reference to that his cars that were missing on Daddy Free's life. So I'm sure it's something that some people, if you watch the video, you'll be familiar with. So fast forward to where we were in the house and they were having their issues. And then my husband said, my ex-husband said he wanted to visit Nigeria. I said, okay, fine. So fast forward to when I rented my house and I moved into my house with um, my family were in the house. My husband later came and joined us in the house so after i moved when my ex-husband came he wanted to see daddy around that period as soon as i left the house it wasn't long after i left the house i one day she called me she was crying on the phone that daddy said he wants to leave again that she's so scared because the last time he left he left for about over two years and now he wants to leave again that he doesn't want to stay in the house that he's probably running away from responsibility and all that and daddy that I know at, as of that time, he was also complaining that he, he's financially not okay, that staying in the house doing nothing does not suit him. So he was trying to, like he said, he wanted to go out and, and see if he can get job outside, maybe in Abuja, go back to Abuja or go somewhere else apart from Lagos, where he can actually get help or something. So daddy later moved out of the house. He went to somewhere in Ibafo. I've never been to that place before until when my ex-husband came and he wanted to see daddy. We drove all the way myself, my ex-husband, we drove all the way to Ibafo. When we went there, there was a building and the guy, there was one guy, I don't want to mention his name. There was one guy that was there, that he was living with that guy and there were so many people again in that house. I was wondering uh, why daddy had to leave his house to go and stay in that kind of place, in that place. So daddy said that place was preferable for him to stay 
I could remember vividly that the wife was also trying to reach out to the said guy. At certain time, she would say, uh, when she reached out to him, he was not responsive well and all of that. They were having some issues and all of that. So that he was there in Iba for, for, for a very long period of time. And that guy was taking care of him in Iba for, for a very long period of time. So when I came back, when I got to Iba for I called her, I said, this is where that is staying, no. That are you not going to do something about it? At least let him come back. That place, I don't think is very comfortable for him. So she said, ah, that if he wants to move her, she cannot stop an adult from going to where he's, he wants to stay. Since his own house is not comfortable for him to stay anymore. According to her, he was running away from responsibility, responsibility and, and stuff. They both had different view. According to daddy, there was no money and he was trying to go and look for other means of getting money. So, and I said, okay, we are coming back, myself and my ex-husband and everything, we are coming back to uh, um, Lagos because Ibafo is almost outside the sketch outskirts of Lagos. So she pleaded with me that day. She said, "If can we bring him back? I said, the way I saw him, I don't think he's willing to come back. In fact, he was saying he's going to stay there for about three months and later go to Abuja. That's his plan, that they were working on something. The guy he was, he said they were working on something, on one program that could likely bring him money. I had faith that whatever it is they were working on will likely bring him money. So I said, okay, well, so when I came back, when we came back, I had a conversation with her. I could remember vividly really then. That was the first time she pleaded with me. She said, look, prior to when I came back, that daddy has left the house severally in a very lengthy period of time since he stopped getting jobs and things stopped working out for him. That, she, that and most of the time that he's not around, most of the time he's outside. When she contact the people he's with, she's not able to reach out to him. That now that I've rented a house and it's a five-bedroom, um, duplex in in like very close, not very far. Because when I was looking for that house, I was with them. So when I went, to, I was li living with them when I went to look for the house. So I didn't look for somewhere that is very far. I looked for a place that is very okay for it. was actually myself and her that went to look for the place. You understand? So we got a place that was very close. So she was pleading with me that ah, can Daddy come and stay with me for a while? That if you even if it's the TikTok thing that we are doing that is bringing money, let's be doing it. At least she seems much more money to set to starting bills. That if it's that one that is working out, let's do it. At least she'll be able to reach out to him if he's in my place. Other than him being in certain places that she's not able to reach out with him, he, sometimes she cannot communicate with him, you know. And whenever they communicate, he always end up in a fight. That at least to some certain extent, he listens to me and all that. And after that, that for me. My, fam my mother is in the same house, my son is in the same house, my younger brother is in the same house, and my husband, my ex-husband, is actually coming, is actually in the same house at that time. That for daddy to come, in, come and stay with us in that house, it's going to be like a very big family. And I told her that I can only allow that in one condition. If his son, his second son, that was, that was also with us in Lagos there, can come and move in with him, so that it will be a situation of a son taking care of a father in my house. It wouldn't completely be my responsibility. So she later, we had later had a conversation about it, myself, the second son and her, and then we agreed. We said, okay, daddy will come and stay with me. Oh, after she pleaded with me. And if any of these things I'm saying, if you guys feel is lies, I'm going to put evidences out here. So daddy finally moved in with me. When daddy moved in initially, she used to come to the house in fact, not initially, she was coming to the house at, at all times. She will come when she comes, when she wants to go, she will take food stuff and all that things and take back to the house. I never complain. I never complain. I was treating her I was treating her like my mom. Even my mom would sometimes say, ah, I'm treating this woman more than I'm treating her. Her friend would attest to it. Her friend, her friends always say that I have so much respect for her. That the kind of respect I have for her. They've never seen anybody that respected her like that. You know? I used to call her mommy. I don't even call her by her name. Most people my age call her by her name. What do you call her? I call her mommy. You know, and she introduced me to all her friends, telling her friend that um, I'm, I'm a daughter to her. It's one of her friends that has salon very close to my house. She told her friend that I'm a daughter. In fact, when this whole issue happened, the friend called me and she said she's surprised that this same person that was telling me that you've done this for her, she's done what happened? How did this, how did things went this bad? How did things escalate like this? What really happened? You know, when I said I was closer to her than I was with daddy, 
most time when she wants to do something, she'll come and meet me and tell me to do, tell daddy. Like when she started talking about daddy selling property, she went to meet daddy several and told him about selling property. Daddy quite didn't sit well with it. She had to come to me and say, please help me talk to him. He listens to you. Talk to him in a way you understand. Because if I'm talking to him, you will think, oh, I'm doing this because I want to use the money for my selfish reason. Let him see reasons that he needs to sell this property so that they can take care of the kids and everything. And I went to daddy. I quite cried for him. I said, please, look at the situation the family is right now. The reason people own property is so that when things are bad with, for them, they can be able to sell the property and settle some, some of their issues, you know. At one point, okay, fast forward to when daddy started living in the house, she was coming, she would come and go and all, all, and all that. Fast forward to when she now said he should sell the property, one, one, one plot of land. Now, this is when the matter became tricky. So when daddy moved in, not so long, she said that she started pleading that daddy should sell a plot of land. I still have some of the communication on WhatsApp and everything when she was even sending me screenshot of a, a, a copy of where the land is and everything. And that land, somebody was in charge of the land, you know. So daddy sold that land, you know. When daddy sold that land, they both agreed on a certain amount of money. I think that land was sold for about three million naira. She said she wanted daddy to give her. 1.5 million naira or 2 million naira. Daddy said what he was able to give her around that period was 700,000. So she kept insisting that out of the 3 million naira, he should. Okay, the money that even came was not up to 303 million naira because the person that sold the land took his own percentage of about 200 million, um, 200,000 naira. So the money that came was about 2 point something million. And she said out of that 2 point something million, she wanted she wanted her to give her about 2 million plus. I know why I'm, I'm, I'm talking in details because I want you guys to really understand certain things. You know, so when that in her finally accepted to give her 700 and she called me again. They just me, please talk to him now, talk to him. And I don't know how she calls him, how she addresses him is this man. That is what she, if you check all our chat, is this man, this man in our message, in our conversation, mostly how she addresses me, talk to this man now, and talk to this man. At least let him do, um, let's use this money for something useful and all of that, you know. So daddy now said, okay, he was going to give 700000 At some point, I was like, okay, daddy, let's be reasonable at least. Let's at least clear the children's school fees, add it to whatever that is coming up from TikTok, clear the children's school fees and all that. So I can't remember per se how much daddy said sent that period, but I'm sure it was either one million or one million plus. After daddy now sent that money to her, the next day, she started calling that she wanted 12000 after that, he has sent um, over a millionaire or a millionaire to her that she wanted 12,000. She called him that he was lambasting her on the phone, that she wanted me to go and talk to him again. And I said, Mommy, this one, I will not involve myself. The house is not far. You can either take, um, she, ha she has, a, of course, she has a car then. I said, You can either, either, either take a car and come to the house and convince him yourself to send you the 12,000 because. I know what it was for me to even talk about sending, making that 700,000, 1 million now. Now for me to go back and ask him for 12,000 just a, a, a day later, I cannot do it. So she got pissed. She started calling me, calling me, calling me, calling me. At some point, I said, okay, let me go and talk to daddy. I went to talk to daddy. Daddy said, uh -uh, that even this money he's keeping, he's not going to spend it. That he's also keeping it for food and everything if they need anything. Because while he was in my house, he's feeding his... Um, hospitals because after he came from hospital of course we're still buying hospitals to regulate his heart and everything so the medications he was taking for his uh, his heart from the hospital the hospital actually um what's the name of this hospital living heart hospital is there go and make inquiries i was always going to that hospital living house hospital to make sure that he was okay i was always buying his drugs every two two weeks you can go there and make inquiries the, the receipts are there in that hospital while he was in my house, all the hospital, the, all the medicine they wrote for him to be taken from that previous hospital, I make sure he never missed any of his, his, his drug for one day. So he said, ah, the money that was remaining, that he was actually going to give it to her, but at least she should give it some time, that he just gave her one million, you know, that's their issue. So she started calling me, I told her that, you know, I've tried to talk to Daddy about sending you extra 12,000. The same thing he told you, the same thing he, he, he told me that he's unwilling. She called the son, the son Try to talk to daddy, and daddy was still unwilling to send her 12,000 naira. That how can he send one million today? Just say that she's asking for 12,000 naira. The next thing, there's this other girl, I don't want to give her cheap publicity. There's this other girl that 
In fact, I don't even let me not just give her any publicity at all. There's this other girl, she went on daddy's Instagram, she started insulting me on daddy's Instagram, threatening my life and saying all sorts of things. And this was the same girl daddy's wife was warning me about telling me, Oh, this girl, this is what she has done in the past, and all of that. Her she has had a, in fact she said a lot of things that the girl has done with that in the past that i should be careful and all of that and that period of time that girl was coming to my house she come to my house she would eat even while i was doing tiktok live with me she would join me and do the tiktok live and all of that you know so this said girl i don't know what she went to discuss with daddy's wife and whatever they discussed she came on the next thing she was threatening my life on instagram telling me that i know thank god i know who she is blah 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 that i should watch my back and stuff i took the screenshot of the chat i said ah that it um this is what this girl is writing on instagram and what is going on the last i remember was your wife asking me for twelve thousand from the money asking me to convince you because i was not the one sending the money i was never in charge of daddy's account i was never in any way in charge of his account his money was his money it was never my money rather i was the one sponsoring most of the the funny things that were the expenses you know mostly from the money i make from tiktok from money we make i make from his from my tiktok from his tiktok and also from the money I saved for my business in Cyprus. So, while this was going on, the wife now started sending, calling me. She was quite pissed, uh, like um, that I didn't do what she asked me to do, and blah 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 blah. The next thing I saw was she was crying on social media that uh, my husband is somewhere. Whether she said they kidnap him or my husband is somewhere with his girlfriend, and blah 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 blah. I'm like, what? I don't know where my husband is. I haven't seen my husband for months. I've not heard about my. I've not heard from my husband. Makimi, I ran away from him. He came from his girlfriend's house to come and beat me. To come and kill me, he removed his wristwatch. To come and beat me, and I run. I push him out. I run away. Look at where I am. Everywhere I don't crack. Everywhere water. Inside has water. Everywhere. Look at the car I'm driving. Everything. Nothing. My children they know they eat everywhere scatter no school fees and you're telling me to do what oh god <laughs> oh not today i'm like what is this man that came to my house barely three days ago that packed food stuff from my house that he, my husband is with his side chick at what point exactly did you know that i'm your husband's side chick because you were my husband just barely three days ago so at what point did you know did you find out that i was his side chick because let me throw this question now is there any wife any nigerian wife here that you know that somebody is your husband's side chick but you'll be comfortable coming to their house eating their food rolling with them calling them daughter that means you actually do not love your husband in the first place now if you are comfortable with running all these kind of activities with the with the so-called side chick i have a lot of videos of me and her I have a lot of videos, videos of me and her in hotel. I have a lot of videos of me and her going, even, even on my birthday, we celebrated my birthday. In so many places, shopping together, doing things together. We were that close. So, all of a sudden, we're talking about sending 12,000 and not sending 12,000. All of a sudden, she was the first person in my life that has ever defamed me, defamed my person or defamed my character or called me out. Before then, nobody has ever called me out. Nobody has ever said anything ill about me. I've never had any fracas with anybody. So I took the conversation, um, the, the threat messages on Instagram from this said girl, and I went to um, Aja Police Station to make a report. When I went to Aja Police Station, they saw all these screenshots and they said, oh, this is cyberbullying and threat of life. So they invited the girl to come to the station. And make a report and so that she can give her own account as to why she was threatening my life they came the police people went to at the time when they wanted to invite uh, arrest her she was in daddy's house that's mr Ebu's house that's where she was she was at that house with the wife they were sitting and discussing so when they came they said okay they wanted to arrest so person nobody even invited her being the wife to the police station no. They told the girl, this is the reason why we're coming here to arrest her and all of that. And she stood up. She said, if they're taking the girl anywhere, she will go. That she will go anywhere they're taking the girl, that she's going to go alongside with the girl. The police people now said, okay, your mother, welcome. So when they went to the station and all, 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 all of us were there, they were narrating everything. Daddy said, daddy narrated the, the then DPO, he, if the then DPO can attest to most of these things that I'm about to say now. It was the daddy told them, he said, okay, this is a person that I have been with for 
they passed almost a year that he told them about the issue he was having, <clears throat> the issue he was having with his wife, the issue he has been having and why he left the house and all of that. And that I haven't wronged him in any way. In fact, that he's surprised that that his wife is dragging me. He told them how I've been of help to the family, how even the wife came to the house barely a few days ago to take food and all of that. So later, the said girl came and was begging me when she saw that I wanted to charge the case to cut and all of that. She was begging. They were pleading. She even said she wanted to do a video. She said she wanted to do a video in Aja Police Station and apologize to me. The next thing she was supplying inf uh, some information to Gislova. She would say this in the police station. She would go to Gislova and supply another information. She would tell Gislova, oh, the family have said that. And this is the same girl that came to meet me that uh, her uh, Instagram account is not growing. That she wanted me to help her grow her account. That she has been with daddy for a very long time. A lot of people know that with daddy. She has been with daddy for a very long time. That her social media platforms are not growing. That she doesn't know how I, I do it. That me, within a very short time, I, I just blow. A lot of people know me on social media and stuff. <clears throat> and I told her that, <clears throat> excuse me, I was just doing my thing from my own heart, from my goodwill. I was just doing my thing. I wasn't expecting much. It wasn't like there was a pattern I was following. I wasn't following any pattern. I, it's not like I studied this in school. I was just doing my thing from the depths of my heart, from the genuineness of my heart, and things were coming along. You know, I told her, okay, I was going to help you, you know, find a way you're going to grow your page. I'll give you some tips. And I was actually giving her some tips on how to build her page. So as far as I know, this was a pure case of envy and jealousy. A case of envy and jealousy from that point where they dragged me on social media from the first time. Then they claimed that they've apologized. Later, she went on just love her. She sent a whole different... It, it, different things were happening in the police station. Different things were being carried on this lover. She would say, eh, Mr. Ebo has gone back to the family. Him and the wife has confirmed. And the Jasmine girl has... What happened? That same day, after this lover dragged me, after I was dragged on social media, after the wife uh, paraded me on social media as a terrible person, after the whole reconciliation, where did the man sleep? Where did daddy, where did Mr. Ebo sleep? He still came back to sleep in my house. He still came back to sleep in my house. After the whole thing, the wife came back or came out on social media and said, I have accepted Jasmine as uh, my, 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 my adopted daughter. I have not accepted that. You were the one that started telling people that I was your daughter. You were the one that started parading me as your daughter. You were telling all, your, all of your friends that I'm, I'm your daughter, that I've been like a daughter to you, that I'm the, I've been of help to you. You were the one parading me like that. Then you came and say you've accepted me as your daughter, you've accepted me as a social media manage, uh, hand, manager and, and what's not. You know, I didn't quite say anything. You know, after much, we did an interview at Daddy Free's place because that first time I had all the proofs, thank God. Both the money I was sending to her, I showed everything on Daddy Free's life. Both the, the land they just said, they just sold, the land they sold, everything. Whatever happened that period was just a case of jealousy i don't know where that jealousy emitted from because you ca you, you cannot jealous somebody that you are benefiting from you cannot every someone that you're benefiting from you know that you are benefiting directly from this person if i'm a terrible person as the whole world is painting me to be will i open a tiktok account for that woman and grow the account will i in any way contribute to her paying her children's school fees Will I be spending my time? Let me not call it a waste of time. Going life with daddy, generating money, and still remitting that money to her and daddy. I don't even want to. I don't even want to look at, go back and look at the sacrifices I've made for this family. A lot of people are saying this girl is using Mr. Ibu. She's using. How am I using Mr. Ibu? How am I using daddy? I want to know. How am I? How can I be using someone that is benefiting directly from you? A lot of people are saying she, he's a sugar daddy. Look at me very well. At my age, if I want to go and have a sugar daddy, I will look for one that is doing very well, financially okay, that can actually provide for me, not somebody that directly is benefiting from me. I'm not saying this to bring anybody down. I'm saying this just exactly the way it is. This is the one that when I came back, daddy could not boast of 5,000 naira of his own. And the people directly around him, they know that. 
Sorry to say, AGM president is fully aware of what I'm saying right now because I was there so many times when daddy would call him, be the AGM president asking for money. The AGM president will send 5,000, 50,000, 20,000, so many times. He knows. He all know. Most of them in the industry know, knew that around the period I came back, daddy was not doing fine. They know. They know the story. They cannot see. They don't know the story. They know. They know he, he was at his lowest when I came back. So I want to make sure that of all the people in Nigeria, I don't go to people that will help my life, people that will, that will help me be a better person somehow, people that will provide for me financially. I'm doing sugar daddy with someone that was benefiting directly from me financially. So back for, um, fast forward to all these things that happened. I was dragged on social media. By the grace of God, I had it the opportunity to come and clear myself on so uh, on that in freeze life and everything after everything happened people were warning me stay away from this woman someone that can go this far to bring you down this person does not want your progress stay away from her me if anybody that knows me know me jasmine eh? i'm not someone that carries things to heart anybody that knows ask anybody that has ever had direct contact with me i can boldly say financially that it might not have helped me financially but from doing what i was doing from the depth of my heart just from trying to support him from the depth of my heart. People came to love me through his platform. I was also able to, to build my platform. I was able to build a fan base from, a, from, from the fan base of people that love him. If I wasn't doing, I did not just sit back and start having followers, no. I was not just sleeping and started having followers. I wasn't even looking for that fame at the time it came. I was just doing my thing, being that person that was trying to re resurface him back to the internet. It was a mutual thing. When I came back, nobody was talking about daddy now. Nobody was talking about Mr. Ebo on social media. Nobody. He has built his name legendary. Yes, I acknowledge that. But at that time, he was not that hot. Okay, people were not look, looking looking out for him. It was when I came back, I put, I brought him back to the limelight. I recovered everything that was lost. Brother Shaggy reached out to him. Brother Shaggy actually reached out to me directly. I was the one that made that skit happen. And that money was paid to his wife. That money was paid to his wife. I cannot count how many people that this kid with daddy and the money was sent to his wife directly. Daddy will not even take one error from the money. He will send it to his wife. It was in a bit to bring daddy back to the limelight that God showed me favor. It was in a bit to bring him back to the limelight that God showed me mercy and people started to love me. But some people did not well sit, sit well with it. Some people did not like the fact that I was going fast. They were talking about it. Even look at the voice audio that they, they posted. They say I was having an affair with daddy. The woman on the voice audio, what was she talking about? And Jasmine, who is Jasmine? That Jasmine is claiming she's your daughter. She just got fame overnight. She's making no money overnight. Look at, look at their pain. Daddy, daddy. After your wife begged me that I should stay at my place, now I'm hearing some kind of news that my ear cannot even carry. That I'm having an affair with you and I'm having an affair with Biggie. Eh? People of the world, how can it be possible? My own daughter, how can it be possible? Whoever brought, brought this topic forward will take punishment. Eh? That, you, that, that you've had an affair with me, that I was your girlfriend before you now adopted me as your daughter. I'm like, what kind of talk is this? Eh? People that say it, I think they'll continue with gossip. And the only time of results, for those people that gossip, they will still receive their own results. When did that kind of thing happen? Ever? When did that kind of thing happen? It's not possible. <laughs> it's not possible. Look at, look at their disturbance. Look at what is giving them sleepless nights. The fact that you that fan base, if it was up to them to take it down, they would have taken it down a very long time ago. But let me not deviate from the issue. Let me go back to the issue. So, as I was saying, AGM president knew what was happening. Most of the time that he was having issues with the wife, he would call AGM president and talk to him. Immediately he's calling AGM president, the wife would call AGM president, I will call AGM president. If AGM president was always in the midst of call. At some point, he stopped taking the wife's call. She knows. At some point, he stopped taking her calls. She will come and tell me that Asian president is no longer picking my call. I think it's tired of our family problem. These are the ones that happened while I was around. No, while I was away. The one that happened in my presence. I know how many times Asian president will send money to her. Send money to daddy. I know so many people in the industry that were sending money to the wife. The wife was calling a lot of people, telling them that daddy is bad. He's a deadbeat father. He was not taking care of his children. But the time that daddy was making money, he was doing every, he was ripping the fruit of his labor. He was there for his children. He was taking care of them. 
But because things fell apart, she was destroying his name to every single person that mattered. I don't want to start calling names of people right now because they know themselves. She'll call everybody, she'll tell them that daddy is evil, daddy is this, daddy is this. They will send her money. A lot of people stop talking to daddy. Daddy stopped getting a lot of job because the wife has called people and destroyed his character. That is why they, daddy stopped, a lot of Nollywood people stopped mingling with him. They were sending her money. I know a lot of people in the industry that have called me. I said, do you know how much I've sent this woman? Do you know some of them will send me screenshots? This is how much I've sent this woman within a, a certain period of time. How many times has she come back and say, ah, this person has supported me? She has never told me. But it was these people telling me, ah, this is what I've done for this woman. In fact, the family was sustained by people, by friends, by good friends, by, 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 by close associates for a very long period of time. I want to say something. If her problem is the fact that as she said, I am the problem. I'm saying this for people that will come and ask, eh, leave this home alone, leave this family alone. I was on my own. They, 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 they involved me. I was on my own way. They involved me. I was on my own way. She asked daddy to come and stay in my house. But a lot of you say, leave this family alone, leave this family alone. How am I holding the family? If her problem was rather, if her problem was about, um, say, let's say she's, she's saying that daddy is cheating and daddy is cheating with me. When daddy had children outside the marriage, why did she come and tell the entire Nigeria that hey, daddy had daddy had twins outside the marriage? He had other children outside the marriage. Why did she come and tell Nigeria that daddy had children outside the marriage? Why did she come and cry? Because then there was money and she was living very okay. Daddy could do anything and get away with it and she would not complain. But when there was no money and I was there supporting, you were the one that clearly brought me into the picture. You were closer to me than daddy was. Why would you come and tell Nigeria that you are more closer to me than your husband is? So if you're accusing me of having an affair with your husband, you can as well accuse me of having an affair with you. That's what it is. That is exactly what it is. So Adi, let me go back to the station, issue at the station. The, um, so they apologized. They came back. They said she said she's the said guest said they are sorry and everything. They were putting on different information on just love. I didn't I didn't have to say anything because people around that no no. In fact, it was excuse me. My landlady, my landlady was a witness, and some other people were witness. They came there. Some of her good neighbors. They came there, and one of her friends. They were there. They saw how the whole settlement is happened. She came on that the phrase life and all of those. Things happen, and I went on my own. Daddy came back to the house. She was visiting Daddy for some time. Sometimes she wouldn't come, you know. And ever since then, Daddy has been in my house with his son. His son was the one taking care of him in my house. Till now, let's go back to the main issue that is at hand now. Let's go to the main issue that is at hand now. At some point, Daddy was with me. After they sold that land, she started recently, around July, I'll put everything I'm talking right now, I'll put on the screen. And I'll be playing a lot of voice notes. And for those of you that come and ask me, why were you recording? I started recording when her friend, her very close friend told me that this is what the wife, that is wife said. Person I call my own mother. Person I call mommy said, if you are dealing with the devil, use a long spoon. In that phrase, she was referring to me. It's someone that will come and talk to me, tell me her challenges, and I will go beyond my 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 own means to support to make sure she's okay. I said, okay, these people have dragged me out on social media the first time. They've said all sorts of things that took me on away the second time. From now on, as long as that is living in my house, whatever I'm doing, I'm going to be keeping details of calls, details of what is eating, details of everything, even the TikTok and everything, everything that is happening. I Thank God I kept details of everything. Otherwise, right now, I would have been doing a lot of explanations without no evidence. I would have been explaining, explaining without no evidence. As I'm speaking, the evidence will be running on the screen. After the whole saga on Gis Lover, Daddy Free's page and everything, Daddy came back to my house that same day. The day that Gis Lover posted that uh, Mr. Ebo has finally reconciled with his wife, he's with the children and blah, 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 blah. After everything, after the dragging on social media, she still left him to come and stay in my house. He was there, she was frequenting the house for some time, you know. Everything was going on well. Then daddy was still battling with his health. Daddy has had this health issue for over four years. He had a major health challenge for over four years that 
now he's if sometimes he feels like he's getting better sometimes he feels like he's deteriorating but at every point as long as he was at my place i was making sure he was getting all his medicines and i have received for all of them so um, recently around july she said she wanted to sell the house that they were living she wanted daddy to sell she proposed that she wanted daddy to sell the house that they were living and she wanted me to convince daddy the house they were living the 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 house paper was not actually with daddy the house paper was actually with the person that sold the house and i think daddy deliberately did that because almost all his property he kept them the document with the people he bought them from most of it is not with him so she was like and hey, talk to daddy so that he will call that guy the guy that that he sold the house from to sell the paper to sell send the paper of the house so that they can be able to sell the house and they started talking so at the point when she was talking to daddy to sell the house she said she was done with the marriage that she wanted to go her way, that she's still young, she can still remarry, she can still take care of her children, and that she just said to her. I said, okay. She said she has already uh, spoken with him that um, if, what he's saying, she don't understand, he's going left and right. I said, okay. I went to talk to daddy. I said, daddy, this is what mommy said. She said that we should find a buyer and sell the house. What's your take on it? And he now said he's not ready to sell any of his property right now. That he's not willing to sell any of property like now. They started going back and forth with it. They involved some friends, some family members, and all. Finally, they both agreed to sell property. So when they finally agreed to sell the said house, that's the house she's living in. Because the house water was entering the house. A lot of things were not uh, well, you know. So she said she wanted daddy to settle her. We sell the house and settle her with about 25 million. I don't know. Daddy said he was not going to pay that much amount of money that when he sells the house, he wants to rebuy a house, a better place where he can stay. He's up to her if she wants to move in with him there and then move in with the kids. Otherwise, he will not be paying her 25 million for settlement. She even called somebody. I don't know. She said he's a lawyer or, yeah, she said he's a lawyer that the person is going to do an agreement that that is going to settle her with 25 million naira. She brought a buyer. A buyer came from the house. My only duty there that she told me was to convince daddy to make sure daddy signs the paper and sell the house. Our daddy that barely moves out from the house, I was able to convince daddy we went to the house where she's staying with the children. Daddy now said, okay, he has accepted to buy. The, the buyer came. I have the conversation with the buyer. She was the one that gave the buyer my number. She doesn't trust me to a certain extent. She won't take the, the number of the buyer she brought to buy the house and give me the number. If she gave me the number of the buyer, she gave me the number of the, the buyer's lawyer. So, so that whenever they want to communicate to so that, they'll communicate through me. So there was an agreement to sell that house for 44 million naira. Out of that 44 million, she was demanding that daddy would give her 25 million naira as settlement for the marriage, that she was done with the marriage. And daddy said he was only a that he's not he's not um he's going to use the money and buy another house for both of them to stay. She doesn't want to stay, he's only going to give her four million naira. So that disagreement between two of them, that is saying he's paying, giving her four million naira. She is saying she um she wants um twenty five million naira and all of that. I was not telling her, I said, okay, for me, what I what I think is better now, since you want daddy to sell the house, that um um, putting that certain amount of money might ac actually discourage him. Why not allow him once he's done selling the house and whatever? I, she came and asked for my opinion, and that's what I told her. So she said, Okay, let them sell the house first. The day they were about to sell the house, they informed the first son and every other person, you know, the first son doesn't quite well sit with the father selling his property. But due to the situation at hand, things were was really bad, like things were sour, things was not okay. You know, and she was not working. She has not worked for the past eight years. In fact, roughly since they got married, she was not working. At some point, she said she did some things and it did not work. And or she, if you ask her, she will say daddy was the one that stopped her from working. At least that's what she said. Several, even online, she said it herself that, that daddy stopped her from working. You know, I'm I'm a very young girl. I'm a mother of one. I am working. I work. I have other businesses I'm doing. I invest. I cannot sit one place and say, okay, I'm not working because uh, somebody said I should not work. That can never be me. But anyways, it works for them. Whatever works for them, right? So when they were talking about selling the house, later I got a son from the a call from the first son from South Africa saying there's somebody coming from UK. Now I want you guys to pay attention to this part because this is one part that Nigerians 
don't know. This is one part that they don't want to tell Nigeria what really happened, what really transpired. So the son called and said, um, the first son called and said um, that daddy, that there's somebody, that is one of daddy's friend. His name is Frank. They call him Frank Nolly. Nolly. Now that daddy's friend is coming, you know, that he said he wanted to help daddy and fly daddy to UK. I said, okay, oh. He sent me the number. That was a day before the buyer of the house wanted to pay for the house. Then that said friend called me. He said, eh, he had that daddy stay with me. I said, yes. He said he wants to fly daddy to UK and give daddy better treatment. That, eh, can I take that? That he's going to send me, I sent someone to come and pick daddy from my house and take daddy to Abuja. They already have the arrangement going on in Abuja. And once daddy goes to Abuja, they will take him to the interview at the embassy and everything. Rada, rada, rada. I said, okay. I called the wife. I said, okay, oh, that there are chances that daddy might not be able to sign the paper for the property tomorrow. That somebody just called, a friend of daddy called from UK saying that, that they want to relocate daddy to UK and give him a better treatment. But before daddy will leave here, she is going to speak. I told her that me, I feel like she should speak to the man, find out who he is. If she gives go ahead for daddy to leave my house, he will leave. Thank goodness I recorded that call because me, after the Shege Pro Max they have shown me, the first time that she, after three days of coming to my house, she came and said she don't know where her husband is. I decided to be very detailed and be keeping record of every single thing because I know that some that the next one that they will lambast me, eh? It will be more than the first one. I was already prepared for it. I know that the next one that if they can do something like that, anybody that can do something like that, the next one will be worse than it. So I recorded that call. I told her, okay, call the man. Whatever you decide with the man, you let me know. If you feel like daddy should go to Abuja, who am I to stop daddy? If the first son said daddy should go to Abuja from Abuja, he should go to UK. Who am I? What position am I in the family to stop him? So she said I should send her the man's number. I sent her the number. It's on my WhatsApp chat. It will play on, on my screen. I put a screenshot on my screen. So when she contacted the man, after some hours, she said, okay, oh. she called me back. I've spoken to the man. and I know him. Is that his old friend? I didn't even know yet. He's the one I was talking about. So like he promised her that he was going to send her some amount of money that I should, I should, that no problem. That he also told her that um, she should not sell the house that they want to sell. That he's coming back to Nigeria. When he comes back to Nigeria, they are going to renovate that house. And then when they renovate it, the price of the house will go up. So they'll be able to sell the house at a better price. I said, okay, my thing is, should daddy go to Abuja or not? Because you're the one that said daddy should come and stay with me. So if he said daddy should go to Abuja, I'll tell him, I will allow him to go to Abuja. The call is, I will, I will not take him to where the, the, the airport, I mean, where they said I should take him to. She said I should go ahead, that the man can take him to Abuja. That when the, the man even said he's coming back a week later to Nigeria, and when the man comes, he's going to help them do the house. The house is going to be better, and then they're going to sell it in a higher price. I said, okay. I called his son. I said, Iyawo, that's if I'm referring to the to her to the son, I call her Iyawo. Your father's wife has said, okay, that your father can go. But before your father go, I'm leave my place. I'm going to do some tests, take him to the hospital. That hospital, they were the one that introduced me to the hospital. The doctor there, the said doctor has been treating daddy for the past eight years. So she knows his entire body history. She knows if he, daddy's having a headache, she knows his headache. She knows everything. Before she, she was working in a military hospital, before she had opened her own hospital where daddy has been going for treatment, you know. So she knows literally everything about his health issue. So I took daddy there for medical checkup. They check his entire body. She said, okay, as long as he's taking his heart, his medicine for his heart, he's okay. Then she checked. She said, ah, but I'm seeing blood clot on his leg. Is he complaining of pain? I say, yes, so he has been complaining of slight pain, but sometimes you say the leg is paining him, you know, or I don't know how bad it is. She asked him if the leg was paining him. He said he was having some small, small pain on the leg. So she gave him medicine for the blood clot and everything. I packed everything. I picked up my phone. I called AGM president. Thank God he's still alive. For those of you that would want to confirm, I don't know if he's somebody that wants to speak about the issue. If he still doesn't want to speak, I'll respect him for no more to talk about it. But that doesn't mean I cannot make reference to things that I know happen or people that I know experience what I'm saying firsthand. I said, sir, greetings, sir. With all due respect, sir, I know that you know 
that daddy has been staying in my house for a very long period of time you know because you've been in communication and daddy has been calling you from my house and you've been settling all the family issues that have been going on and you have been supporting him in one way or the other financially that is what is going on now the son called from south africa that is a friend of daddy that said he wants to come and take daddy to uk uk for medical treatment that daddy is leaving my house so but before he leave my house I'm, I've taken him to the hospital. I've done tests, check him. This is what the test result is and all of that. And I've also called the wife and give, given the wife the man's number. And the wife has said, okay, fine. That daddy can go with, go ahead and do the travel. I just want to let you know that daddy, in the person of Mr. Ibu, is no longer in my house. So just in case, as the Asian president, I feel like you should be aware. And my take is, as daddy is living now, going to UK, I don't have... Um, plans of him coming back because myself around july i told him that myself i also have plans to travel that was around july i still have uh, evidence of when that that message or that call was made i said around july i'm also traveling no he now said okay that i've done the writing as i've done the the test and everything i said yes so the argument was done um they called somebody they said somebody should come and pick daddy i said no um, nobody's coming to my house to pee. In fact, the person that he caused come and pick him was the guy he was living with in Iba for that period of time. That he was he left his house. When he left his house, I mentioned quite earlier that he has stayed in different hotels in Abuja for over two years. He has stayed in different hotels in, in Lagos for for over a year. He has lived with different people. I'm not the only person that he has lived with. He has lived with friends, strangers, people he meet. He was just living with one person or the other. Before the wife asked him to come and ask me to allow him to come and stay in my house. So, it's quite unfortunate that I have to talk about this issue, but what choice do they leave me with? What choice do they leave me with? I have to talk about it and free my mind off. And as I'm talking about this, it's going to be the first and last time I'll ever have to speak about this issue. So, I took him, I told the, the man from uh, what um, UK, I've not met this man before, I don't know what he looks like. I mean, before, before daddy left my house, so. I don't, I've not met him before. I don't know what he looks like before daddy left my house. So I said, um, the person that is coming to pick him, that I'd rather take him to the airport to see with my two eyes that he has entered the airport. And I wanted them to give me the number of the person that is picking him in Abuja. So they sent me somebody's number that I know. I know the person that sent me his number. He has also been with one of the people that have assisted daddy in his own way. Fred. Fred has assist, assisted daddy in his own way. Supported daddy in his own way, as far as I know. Because when I came when i came back to abuja he was one of the few people i met with daddy that supported him in his own way so daddy now went to abuja that's how daddy left my house now when daddy went to abuja they started talking about show they said um they wanted to do a show 40 years in 40 years of or whatever 40 years of first 40 years on stage you know prior to even before they they came we were talking about doing something that will bring daddy back, like launching back to limelight. But because I don't have ideas about shows and everything, since I met daddy, I've never done any show. Nobody will come out anywhere and say, daddy has, um, Jasmine, me, Jasmine, I've done any show anywhere and invited some group of people or anything. I've never sold any, done any show. I've never sold any ticket. In fact, I've never done anything related to getting finance to that for daddy and invited anybody to come. I don't even have an idea. Aside from the TikTok that we do, and the money is being remitted to either him, his son, or his wife. I've never particularly involved in anything financial crisis with daddy. Daddy himself has never for one day come and said anything bad about me on any space. I've never heard him say anything bad about me on anywhere, on any platform. He has been he has been a father figure in my life, and I've always maintained that mutual respect. He has never sexually assaulted me in any way, contrary to what people are saying right now. So, back forward, fast forward, back forward. Let me say back forward because, yeah, it has happened. So, when daddy got to Abuja, they created a group and they had me in the group. And thank God, every, all the conversation, everything from the group is still on my phone. None of them is missing. They said they want to do 40 years. They were organizing their show in Abuja. They said they needed contact of AGM president. I sent them the number. They needed contact of some actors. The ones I have the contact, I sent them the contact. They said they are inviting some actors that... Um, and I asked what the show was about. They said um, from the show that they were doing, that 40 years on stage, that that's where they would gather money from and send that to UK. That's the money they would use and send it to UK. I said, okay. So when they, they did the show, 
A day before the show, the chat is still on my phone. I'll put it on your screen. I chatted the man that was in the show. I said, sir, daddy is doing a show and one of his family members is invited. That doesn't seem right to you. That in that show, media people will come. A lot of people will come. For me, it doesn't seem right that the wife is not there. None of the children are, are invited. That we should think about it. The man that said to me, he not called me. When he called me, he said that daddy said he doesn't want his wife or any of his family member to be in the show. Now that's that word that he said. And I said, okay, how about if we we'll book ticket for the wife to come without daddy knowing? He said, if that happens and daddy does not come to the show, that he would hold whoever booked the ticket responsible. And daddy has made it clear that he doesn't want his wife to be there in Abuja. Sir, this is what you told me. I said, okay. Then, and I said, okay, well, for me, I will come because there's nothing that he's doing that I will not support. The ticket that I used to go to that show in Abuja, I book it myself. I just wanted to go and see with my eyes what was happening in Abuja. I went to Abuja after that he has left my house for over over a month, I think over two weeks or a month, because they took a lot of time planning the show. Even while Daddy was in Abuja, Daddy was still calling me for financial help. He told me that where he was in Abuja, that they did not give him cash, which I called the man that was doing the show, his friend, and, and told him what Daddy said. He said that they are, they are reserving the money for his travel, that the money was supposed to be made for his travel, and that um that he personally has given daddy starting cash that when he give daddy cash that daddy used the cash i said okay i sent daddy five hundred thousand while he was there i still have evidence of the the money i sent him and that money was from my own tiktok life i did because i was going left on my own account and i sent him that money and the wife was away because i even sent her a slip i sent her the slip of the payment that is the money that i've sent daddy at one point she called me that while daddy is there in abuja she was calling him for money that daddy was not sending her money that they needed money that daddy was not um supporting them in any way that even the the person that called that he was going to send money that it was just fifty thousand that he sent to her and there was no money so a day before the show i went for the show i invited some of my friends i bought ticket for that show i bought ticket me jasmine i bought ticket for that show I bought ticket for myself, a maker on TikTok. Everybody knows a maker on TikTok, the one that behaves like he he, he behaves like a lady. He uses women's uh, wedding gown. A maker. I bought ticket for my um, a maker bought his ticket and one other of my friend in Abuja. We all went to the show. Myself, a maker, and my other friend were exchanged nothing less than one point two million naira that we spread that day on that show. Nothing short of one point two million naira that we spread that day on that show. After the show, I left a day. Immediately after the show, I left the next day. After the show, daddy started calling me that ah, that the entire money that they say they picked was nine hundred thousand naira, and what they gave him out of that nine hundred thousand was about um. I think he said they gave him fifty thousand or so. I cannot even remember again. And I said that it's not possible that they picked nine hundred thousand from that show. That I personally spread. I and my friend together, everything we exchanged and spread is 1.2 million. And there are videos of it. People see me holding a lot of money and spending that. that but if they say it's 900,000, so be it. And that's even the 900,000 that they've not given you was complaining about money, money. I called the organizer of the show, which happens to be his friend. I said, Dr. Frank, what is happening? And this is what that he said. He said, um, that so 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 person sold tickets and so 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 person is yet to rem remit money for tickets that they are yet to do balancing there are a lot of people that came to the show bought the the tickets for for credit some some nollywood people came to support you know some nollywood but the, the people that were listed a lot of them did not come you know so and i said okay so after the show after a week they were going back and forth about the money. Daddy's son was calling how far about the travel. They said daddy's going to travel to UK. In fact, they said they were going to bring the first son back to Nigeria and fly him and daddy to UK for treatment. How far? There was no, nobody was not talking about the UK stuff again. Then later, it was later that the um, said friend, Mr. Frank, said um, that the money they made from the show, that it was not enough, that he spent over... He spent over 4.6 million naira, if I'm not wrong. And then the money they made was around 4 million thereabouts. The first one now called, he said that they should take daddy to the bank, Wema Bank, or they should take daddy to Wema Bank, that, because they created an account for that show. That they should go and find out how much was paid into the account for that show. On getting to Wema Bank, once they requested to print for, to once they requested to print account statements, 
somebody just remove wiped out all the money in their account in their accounts immediately about 700 and something thousand in their account the person just removed their account uh -uh. the bank people at Wema bank now asked daddy did you remove any money from your account now daddy said no they now asked him who else have access to the account he said he's the person that is doing the show and i said okay they are going to freeze this account they now asked him if he gave permission for the person doing the show to to to, to have mobile app for him. He said, no, that he's not even aware that the account has mobile app. So that kind of, they not labeled it a fraudulent activities and freeze the account. It wasn't up to a very long time. The man, that his friend started calling Mr. Frank. He started calling that and asking that he said, ah, what is going on? That um, they have freeze the account, that he removed the money from that Wema Bank account. He wanted to send it to that Zenith, Zenith account because Wema Bank don't print statements. And he was giving his own excuse. You know that 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 they should go and unfreeze the account and blah blah blah. So the son was now insisting that ah that they should send back the money they removed from that account. Then they should remit remit. They should tell daddy how much they made from the show. Then how much they are willing to set him settle daddy for the show because daddy went for that show for if the planning of that show. He was in Abuja for over months and then they they sold tickets. The money was spread and nobody was talking about the money for over a week. You know that ah that that is not possible. Now there are some things that I skipped. I'm going to go back to them, but I'm just telling people what happened. What happened to uh, the money for, from the show? Whatever happened after the show? Now, when Daddy was in Abuja after the show, I told you guys I came back a day after the show, right? Daddy started calling two weeks later that that his leg that is getting worse is getting worse. I said, what is happening? He said he can barely walk. Then every day he'll be calling, he'll be calling. And I asked his wife, I said, when was the last time you spoke to Daddy? And Daddy called me. He was complaining bitterly about his leg. In fact, he was shedding tears on the video call that he can barely walk. That um, his friend is planning to take him somewhere for treating the leg and, and stuff. That that's what he told me. She now said she has called her that... I can't even remember what she said he told her, whether she told he told her that the leg was paining him too and that she doesn't know what to do because she don't have money and that he, he it was his choice for him to go there. So immediately after the show, the next day I came back to Lagos. A week later, that I started calling. He was crying on the phone that his leg is is he's paining him, that he wasn't feeling well. In fact, that He's not very comfortable with the whole Abuja thing, that he haven't remitted money to him and all of that. I said, okay. I called the wife. I said, have you heard from daddy? She said, yes, that the same thing I said is what he told her. I said, okay, what are we going to do? Then he kept calling every day that the leg was bad, the leg was bad. The son now started calling me from South Africa that I should go to Abuja and find out what is happening. That if the plans to travel his father to UK to go and help him get a better treatment is not working i should try and bring him back to lagos i said i cannot bring him to lagos now because of his situation because i told them that before he left that if he leaves there's no way he's coming back again because i was also making plan around that period i was making plans to travel around um july august in fact as of august i've already done every necessary thing that is so i'm supposed to do for me to travel i'm supposed to be in uk by August, every necessary thing that is supposed to be done. If I when I wanted to travel to UK, the first one of the people I told was the wife. And when I told her about my traveling, she pleaded with me that I should include her daughter, her first daughter, to travel with me. I told her that I cannot travel with the girl because the girl is very tall, and I cannot prove to the embassy that 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 girl is my child. So that is why I cannot travel with her. She said okay, and I told her that but if she wants to do her traveling thing, I can show her the same procedure I did. So that she can use it. That was before even Daddy felt um started falling sick, or before nobody knew that Daddy was going to be sick around that period because Daddy was already planning to go to UK. That was why he left my house to Abuja in the first place. So when the son called, he said he just finished speaking to his father that his father is not in a good position, is not in a good state of mind that I should travel to Abuja and go and see what is happening. I said okay, that um we, I'm going to. Abuja to do something about my past, my son's passport. That maybe when I get to Abuja, I might look into, I might decide to go and see what is happening to Daddy. So I traveled. When I got to Abuja, I called Daddy. Daddy was like, 
In fact, right now he's using walking stick. That his friend, the friend that took him from away from my house, that took him to, to relocate him in sorry to take him to UK for medical treatment. That he took him to those the day they call me. They call me that they took daddy to hospital. That they said that he have blood clot. I said yes. I was aware. That was I know what I told you people that he had blood clot. The friend that said he wants to take him to about people to to do it. That there was a time he had a waist pain. I was happy and met all these harbor people, are bulky people, I don't know, that helping him solve this whole. So he was going to take that. And I told him that ah, this about something, I don't think is right. Though. And even if he wants to do that kind of thing, that he should tell the family, should call the wife and call the son. If the family agrees that he should do the thing, then he can go ahead. But me, I cannot consent to it. Then later he said there's one doctor that is coming to do that his surgery. That he said his surgery is whether 9 million or 15 million, I don't know. He said he was saying a lot of things that he was trying, you know. So I told him that even the surgery, that he should consent with the, um, consent with the family before taking any step, you know. So later, then he not called me that uh, the friend has taken him to some harbor people that they did some harbor thing on his leg. That after they did the harbor thing on his leg, that he, the leg is paining him, that they had to buy a walking stick or whatever they call it, walking stick for that to use. I know after this video, a lot of people will come after me. They will come for me, but I don't care. Because what I'm saying is the truth. And I hope anybody that is coming for me should come with the truth. They should say the truth the way it is. Don't come for me with lies. Because everything I'm saying, I have the evidence. I have the evidence. I have the proof. I'm not a stupid person. I've just been quiet because that is situation for the past three months has been very bad. Has been very critical. But I thank God today he's at least he's, he's better, he's recuperating. That is why I have the voice to come and speak for myself. So if anybody is coming at me, they should come with the truth and nothing but the truth. They should present the truth the way I'll be doing today. So, that I said he's using walking stick. That's what now got me. Me that I've already made up my mind that I'm going to UK. I've done the, I've started my processing. In fact, I'm halfway, I'm halfway done, you know? And even this said man, when I started planning my UK thing, he was one of the people, the first, the man that uh, came to uh, take daddy to UK. When they were doing that sh show stuff, I told him I was going to UK. Everybody knows that I was supposed to travel. I was working on my travel. So they know that my UK stuff has, has absolutely nothing to do with this donation. He, this man was even aware of when I paid. Before daddy even fell sick, before they did their, their show, before anything. In fact, matter of fact, I had to cancel my, my, my travel severally. I had to cancel my travel severally because of daddy's health condition. So, and I called the wife. I said, um, daddy said he cannot work very well, that he's work, using walking stick. That I think things has really got back. That can you go travel to Abuja and go and pick him? That I, I, I'm also supposed to be in Abuja for my son's um, visa processing, but... I don't think I will meet up. I think you are you are the best person in the best position to go and pick him. The wife now conditioned me that if she has to go to Abuja to pick her old husband, I have to book ticket for her and her friend that she doesn't have any money. I said, thank God I have I, I have I can lay hold on that call. Whatever I was doing, I was keeping details because I don't forget I've been dragged before. So nobody should ask me, why were you recording? Why were you keeping details? Because if I did not have all these details right now, today you people would have made mockery of me. Because with, what, with everything going on right now, it's as if the hatred has been inside, nurtured for a very long time. It was just hidden because, yes, so we are benefiting from this person. That's what it is right now. So... I thought I said go and bring um uh, go and bring daddy from Abuja. With the way things are going, daddy is complaining badly, bitterly. She now said, eh, I have to book flights. She conditioned me that I have to book flight for her and her friend. I said, okay, I cannot afford flight ticket for you and your friend because also I have something to do in Abuja. I'll be booking flight for myself too. So how about I book your own flight and your friend will find her own flight tickets she now said um that no she cannot go alone no, because she doesn't trust daddy that she might go there daddy will not deny her or she will go and have issue with daddy or daddy will not start saying certain things now 
that it's better she goes with her friend that at least daddy listens to her friend and this is her friend that she's talking about it was through her that i know this woman although this person has never done hurts me anyway directly it was through her that i i met this man the time that we traveled to abuja after daddy was sick after daddy was in the hospital we traveled to calabar sorry from abuja to calabar later on even after that issue, she dragged me on social media through Gislova, and later he, he, I did an interview with Daddy Freeze. Then her friend came to me and said she wanted two of her daughters that were serving, that were just called to serve in NYSC to stay in my house in Lagos here. Those two of her daughters were staying in my house with me. Her friend, though, that is wife friend, yes, real Iburus, her friend. Her daughters lived with me for a long period of time, for over four months, I, I don't know, six months, five months or so. I was doing everything in the house. I never asked them for any single thing. I'm not saying this to take glory or anything, but if I'm a bad person, would her friend children stay in my house and be serving? And they were in the house when daddy was in the house. Oh. Her friend's children were in the house with me when daddy was in the same house. Her son was in the same house. My mother was in the same house. There were some people again that was in my house. So you know that it was not only daddy that I accommodated in my house. So people can also come and say I was having an affair with the children and that's why they were in my house, her friend's children. So she said I had to book flight for she and her friend, for, for her friend to, to, for them to go and bring daddy to Abuja. And I told her friend, okay, can you book your coming? Let me book your going. So I can book her because if you check the flight, the, the, the amount for flight that time it was expensive. And it was not like they gave me money and say, okay, book this flight from this money. No, from my own pocket, from my own savings, from my own pocket. And I thought that we're having this issue back and forth. I said, okay, you know what? I cannot book a ticket for you and your friend, the condition you're giving me for you to go and carry your own husband that is in Abuja that is complaining that his leg is paining him. That is complaining that they just took him to um the traditional people, whether it's Al Sabi, Aboki people, and they cut cut his leg with razor. They said they were trying to bring out the blood clouds from his leg. So they used traditional method and cut cut. I have evidence of all the cuts on his leg. I will show you people how that he lost his leg. That did you know the cause of that his leg was not diabetes. Diabetes was not the core cause of losing his leg. That that was the the, the beginning of how that he lost. Daddy was amputated and go to the hospital and, 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 and make your findings. Go to the first hospital that daddy was taken to, Living Heart Hospital. Go to the hospital and find out how daddy leg deteriorated, that he lost that leg. And what I had to go through to save that leg. So when she, she, she now said, if her friend is not going, she's not going. I said, okay, me and daddy's son will go, the second son, the one that they're accusing me of with right now. So I traveled with daddy's second son. We went to Abuja. Upon getting to Abuja, before we even got to Abuja, do you know that this same man, Mr. Frank, yes, this same man that called me that he wanted daddy to go to his house, that I confided in that I was uh, planning to go UK, that we're doing dependent visa, we're traveling, this is the visa process and everything, went and told daddy, he was the one, because he was the first person I told. He went and told daddy that I, 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 I married his son. That I married his son, that I was having an affair with his son, and that period daddy was not even daddy was he was not his he was not feeling okay. So when they told daddy I was marrying his son, daddy called me and was telling me that uh, they told him that I was I, I, I was having an affair with his son that I married his son. I told daddy that that is not possible, that, that is not true. I told him this is what and what is going on that you already know before that me I was planning to go to UK. Now whatever uh, information they are feeding you on is is untrue. So the father, daddy was so angry that period. He was calling his son. He said, what is happening? Now this person is my child. What is going on between you and this person? You know? So I wasn't surprised when I started hearing all these things. All these things was long planned. Long ago, they planned it. So when I went with daddy's son, we went to, we went to pick daddy up and his son. When we got to the place where daddy was, daddy was working with walking stick. When daddy left my house, daddy left with his two legs. That he has never used walking stick in my house. Never. He has never used walking stick in my house. He has never. He wasn't even limping. He was having slight pain from blood clot and he was taking medicine. And I told them when I, I took him to, I was dropping him at the airport that they should make sure they're giving him his medicine. I even snapped the medicine. The chat is on my phone and sent to them that they should make sure all his medicine he's taking it. They should take him constantly from check up why they were planning to take him to UK or knowing to me it was just 
a show that they were doing. It may, maybe they have intention to take him to UK. I don't know. Maybe the money they did from the show did not cover up. I don't know. So when we were about to leave, in, um, sorry, Abu, when we went to meet Daddy in Abuja, like I said, he was working with, um, he, he had um, crutches or whatever it is, this stuff that they used to hold, uh, they had no wheelchair crutches. So he wasn't working very well. His state of health was so bad. Already there were some cuts on his leg. I was asking him, and Daddy, what happened to your leg? What, what, what is all this mark? He not explained the traditional thing that his friend called some Hausa people. It was through him that I, found, I knew that he called some traditional people to come and treat him. And then I said, okay. He said he wants to go back to Lagos. About the money from the show, they said um, that they were still remitting money from the show. So they did not give us any physical cash or give daddy. Daddy, daddy in fact, even the money I sent to his account when he left Lagos, when he was coming back, his account was zero, zero. They did not give him any cash at hand. Neither was there any money in his account when he was coming back to, to Lagos. When we went to the airport at Abuja, I'll try and check the dates. That day, Daddy could not work at the airport. I had to go in and order for um, ask for wheelchair. I, when the son went in to get wheelchair, they said they cannot give wheelchair. That um, the airport people said they, they cannot take the wheelchair outside. That they can only use the wheelchair within the premises of the airport. I went in there. I was screaming. I was screaming. I was saying, "My father has served you people for a very long time. My father has done this. He has served the public. He has done this. He has done it. Please have mercy. Give chair." I was screaming like a mad person. Anybody working in Abuja airport that day, they can attest to what I'm saying now. I was screaming. I was screaming until somebody came and said, "Okay, it's Mr. Ibu. Please let's give him wheelchair." They came. They use wheelchair. They carry him. When they took him to the check-in point, they said that he cannot fly that he states he's having shortness of shortness of breath, that we need to bring something they call fit to fly. The airline will book say he cannot fly. I started begging them again that he has to fly. He has an appointment with a doctor waiting for him in Lagos, that if he doesn't go to Lagos right now, that his health will, will deteriorate more and nobody is going to take look after him in Abuja and all of that. So out of sympathy, they allowed us to fly that day. Those airport people, they carried him in, in on the wheelchair. When they were taking him to the plane, they carried him like a little baby and put him in the plane. They, they, I, I hope those people can see this video and they can also attest to what I'm saying. When we were coming to Lagos, I called the wife, I called the son and the wife friend. It was a three-way call. Thank God that call was still recorded. I asked them, I said, where is daddy going to stay if he comes back to Lagos? The, the friend, everybody was the friend. I said, the wife first said that he cannot stay in her house, in their house, his house, his own house. And that he cannot stay there, that the house is not good for him, that water is entering the house, the house is in a bad shape. I said, um, but we can we can call people to come and fill the house and put bed in the parlor and all of those things and adjust the house. The house is, is not as bad as, you know, he can stay there. She not say no, that he, in his current state of health, that he cannot stay there. And I told the friend, I said, Daddy cannot come back to my house because Daddy has been in Abuja for more than a month now and they've done this traditional treatment for him. I don't know his state of health. What if Daddy comes to my house and God forbid something happened? What will I tell people? That call was his wife, his first son and the wife friend were in a three-way call. I said, what will I tell people if anything happened to Daddy? Nobody will understand. God forbid if Daddy sleeps and he doesn't wake up in this state of, I don't know his state of health. He doesn't look so good. Nobody would believe that I was trying to help, that I went all the way to Abuja when all of you, none of you, accepted to go and pick him in Abuja. I went to Abuja and pick him. I'm not looking for sympathy. I did what I did from the depth of my heart because that man stood in there as a father for me. I don't care what the entire world is saying. He was there when nobody for me, when my daddy, my mom, when my dad, was, who was his friend, died. He was there for me. People that know me in Imsu, when I was doing my pedigree in Imsu, they know me, they know him, they know that he was visiting, they know, so many years ago. So the man was there for me. So when we we're coming that night, we made that call. We not, they not, uh, I told the wife friend, can you stay at your place? She not said eh, that there is no space in her place, and she gave one reason. I don't want to say what that reason is, but yes, she gave a reason that he should not stay at her place. We had decided that we we're going to rent, um, what is it called? Um, shortlet. I don't ask a question. I said, if we rent a shortlet, who is going to stay with daddy there? The wife not say, and she'll come and be seeing him, she'll be coming and going and all of that. 
after all, the man has said he's not, both of them have decided that they are not marrying again, that they are done with the marriage. Now, one thing I want to clear, one thing I want to clear is that his marriage and his wife's marriage was either done or they were, whatever issue they have in their marriage, they might not be legally divorced or they might have not have gone to any court to divorce, has absolutely nothing to do with me. Daddy was away from his home two years or three years or four years before I came. He was staying from one hotel to another, one, one lodge to another, one house to another before I came to Nigeria. It was even the wife that specifically told me that, it, it, that they were not in a good term, in a good relationship. I have absolutely people that are calling me home wrecker, people that say, leave this family alone. This family pulled pull me in their issues. They brought me in. I never voluntarily say, okay, let me go and offer and be this to them. No. The wife can never say in, her, in, the, in the entire time that she knows me, that she has given me one naira and say, Jasmine, take this one naira. She can never say she has ever given me one kobo. Did I benefit anything from daddy? Yes. His platform has blessed me as far as I know. And most of the advice and some links and some connection, that's as far as it goes. So when we came back to um, this thing, they said that daddy was going to stay in a short let. Well, I was, we started driving along looking for short let. And I told his son, I said, look, if daddy go and stay in a short let now, nobody is looking after him. The, when I made a decision that night, that decision was between me and his son. I said, okay, let's take daddy home. Even my mom was not so happy about that decision because nobody knows his health condition that he came from with Abuja. A reasonable, a reasonable mother would question. My mom was like, Jasmine, what have these people done to you? What, what are you doing yourself? You're a very young girl. Why did you bring him back here? I know you really want to help. I know you're, you've been doing everything to help, but at least let the wife do this. I said, okay, the wife said he's not coming to the house. The wife friend said he's not coming to her house. Should we abandon him in a short let? Make it make sense. My mom now said she's praying for me that this I don't get into a very big trouble that I'm not able to come. You think my mom, my mom doesn't talk to me. My mom lives in the same house with, with me. Some people will say, I hope you're taking care of your, your, your mom. Anybody that knows my mom knows my mom is not lacking anything. My family comes in everything. I have siblings. I have people that I look after. Aside from Mr. Ebu family, I have people that I look after. I have siblings. I have my son. I, I'm paying his school fees. He's doing very fine. My mom has never lacked everything since my father passed. She has been my responsibility. I take very good care of my mom. I make sure my mom is okay. My mom is also someone that is working. She's not someone that is staying and depending on anybody. My mom was a commercial farmer for so many years. She was a commercial farmer. She was farming. Everybody that knows my, my upbringing, that knows my mom, when my mom was still in Kaduna, they know my mom had, my mom was farming. She was farming over 300 hectares of land. She was a commercial farmer. They know her. What they call her in Kaduna was Serikin Noma. So yes, I have a family. I have a very loving family. I have family that really care about me. I stick out. Sometimes I've, I've always I've been in a situation where I have to pick between paying attention to my own family or paying attention to the Mr. Ebu family. I've been in those situations severally, and I've always picked those family because my family were doing very fine on their own. Was it not after they dragged me when they said I was using the man, the, the Mr. Ibo for fame? They said I was using him for fame. I was using my mom. I my, my younger brother started creating content for my mom. Mommy choosing you people know her. My brother created content for her. None of her content in none of her content did he use Mr. Ibo in less than how many weeks? She blew. Even Auntie Fuke was reposting. A lot of people were reposting. She became an internet sensation on her own without using that. She blew. My younger brother, King Wilson, blew up on his own without using anybody. It's a grace in the family. It's a personal grace. Let me tell you something you people don't know. I have trended so many times, even without Mr. Abel. But you people will not know it was me. In 2015, I was trending in a video where I was, we were shooting a movie in 2015. Royal Prince movie, we were shooting a movie. A dwarf was, was, was asking me out in that movie in ShopRite. A dwarf was asking me out. Before I went home, that movie went by. A lot of you posted that video without knowing it's me. Go and do your findings. AY posted that video. Linda IKG posted that video. In 2015, I haven't even come out as an under the, under the umbrella of Okafo or come out as a member of the Okafo family. I was trending. People that know me on Facebook know I was trending. Up here. Go and dig. I know um, um, Twitter people know how to dig. Go and dig. I was trending in that video. That video had over 6 million views. 
So if you think I'm having fame because of that family, I can go and change my name, remove everything, disassociate, my, dis disassociate myself and rebrand myself. I'm not saying I'm not grateful for the opportunity that daddy gave me. That's not what I'm saying. But for people that are trying to make it look like that was the main reason, the main essence. When people are talking about me wrecking this family, calling me husband snatcher, do this one, do that one, all this sort of accusation, I'm wondering where they are getting their own information from. Because rape, rape the family, how? Snatch husband, how? So are you telling me that when I was in Cyprus, I was operating from there and I destroyed the family over two years or four years before I came back? Or you think people in the industry don't know that, don't know what was going on in the family? I mean, because people are not coming out to say anything. When I was in that living house hospital the other time, before Auntie Chizzy birthday, Chizzy Alachi, before her birthday, she came to the hospital. Then he was crying to her. He told her he was born without marriage. I was there. I was the one begging him. He told her that I opened for this marriage. Uh, Nangachi, Nangachi, all my life, working with it, working with it. She was there. He said all those things to her in my presence. I was the one telling her, oh, the wife is not even bad as daddy is saying it to. I was covering up for the wife. She's still alive now. I mean, even on several occasions when he has done so many interviews, I can make reference to Vanguard. You see, the lady from Vanguard came to the house to interview Daddy. Daddy was crying in that interview. He told the woman that, that his marriage has wrecked his life. That his wife was not working. She was not supporting him. That he, he provided everything she wants. That the marriage was rosy until he, he wasn't getting any job. He wasn't getting any money. That everything he was doing was for the wife. He was talking about how he was poisoned. He was talking about how a lot of things in the marriage. He was complaining about so many things. I was the one that played with that woman from, from Vanguard. I was the one that played there with them. The woman was like, he's saying his story. I said, please do not post this thing. If daddy is going to tell his story the way he's posting it, and his children grows up to see that thing tomorrow, that it will not be a good thing for them. Or if people, if how will people react to the father? That is saying something about something like that about his wife. Can I, even, I can even use my mouth and say all the things that daddy said in that video. I hope this, that Vanguard woman will see this video somewhere. I should know that I'm actually making reference to her. I wrote that on my news. If I wanted to destroy this family, I wanted to destroy daddy's wife. I have never sat down where they are talking evil about this woman and I said anything evil about her. I always fight for in her defense. Even when daddy is complaining of sharing um, his bitter experience in the marriage to other people, I always, I always speak in her defense. I told the woman that came from Vaga to interview daddy, I said, please, you have a family. Don't let this video destroy this family because if this video goes out, it's going to destroy the beyond repair. I don't even know if the woman deleted the video or she did not delete the video. I just said, I filter some of the things that I do, the good things he said, post it, the bad one, don't post. Is it now I'm a kilometer? Mariam, have you no video, have you no interviewed daddy in your house? When you interviewed daddy, did daddy have issues with you? When you interviewed daddy and you wanted to post the video, I was begging you. Did daddy not complain about his marriage to you? Am I the one telling him all those things he was saying? When, I, when he said it, when you were about to go and, and publish the, the video in your interview, I was like, Mariam, please don't put this thing out there. You always say, address me, what are you covering? The man has said it. He's a grown up, a grown -up man is crying about his marriage. Let him say. What did daddy not tell you that they married me? Cried before you. Thank God I was there that day. I was telling you, oh, don't pose this one, don't pose this one. I said, even if you do, even if you edit the video, send me a copy to review before you post it. How many things, do you know how many things that would have come outside from daddy's end about his marriage that I cover up? I cover up myself. Even when people know this, because anyone is not coming to say anything, doesn't mean people don't know. I can go on and on and ask how many people in the industry that know what is going on, but they choose to be silent. Now, let's go to the money, the issue at hand about um, 300 million, 55 million, 80 million, 75 million. There's nothing I've never heard missing. Jasmine stole money, so much money. When? When? Um, let me go, go forward to when I told the wife to go and bring daddy from Abuja. And the wife said, I have to book ticket for her and her friend. And then when I, I and the son traveled to Abuja and brought, and finally brought daddy back to, to Lagos from Abuja, the, nobody wanted daddy to stay with them. The wife said daddy cannot stay with her because the house is not conducive enough for him. They said he should come and stay in my place. No feeling whether when he came back from Abuja, he was not in a very good state, state of health. He was, he was limping. He was using crutches when he came 
came to Lagos. Even my mom, my entire family were afraid when I brought him to the house. But I still took barriers. I took barriers. I housed him. The next day, the wife was talking about selling the property that he was supposed to sell before he traveled to Abuja. That they should sell the house and sell to her. I was the one that called the wife friend. I said, please, if daddy is selling this house as the wife wants, let him sell the house. Let him and his wife reconcile. Let me and the friend, I told the friend, come, let's reconcile these two people in our best way. Because I my, myself, I had plans to travel. I wanted to travel. I already started processing my travel. I already done everything that it, they need to do for me to travel. Even before daddy was sick. I told the friend, I cannot continue taking care of daddy. Daddy cannot, I can take care of daddy from a third party, but I cannot sit down and be doing the, 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 the things his wife is supposed to do. Look after him, cook for him, wash his clothes and all of that. Then I had the friend, we have, myself and the wife friend, we had the, the conversation of the phone. I still have that conversation. Even if I don't have that conversation, I'll find a way and take that conversation and get it. The wife friend was not like, okay, I will talk to her. But she has already told me that she's done with the marriage. Even when daddy came back in that condition from Abuja, she said she was not going to. But this thing I'm telling you is not so many months ago. This was just barely how many months ago. This was around October, around the time daddy fell sick. Already, I've already, I've already, I'm done with my travel. They know that my travel has nothing to do with this donation. Really, boy, as Mr. Abu, as you know, you begged me to travel with your own daughter. I told you that I cannot prove to the embassy that your daughter is my child. You said you, were going, you wanted to travel, and I told you that I'm going to help you. I'll give you the link to the angel so that they can be able to do your travel. Why are you not painting me that I'm trying to use donation money and travel? When you know the truth, and you have children, and you know the truth, and you came outside to sell lies. Even the person that did the show and took your husband to Abuja and took your husband to where they used something and cut his leg. You have never for one day and come and say anything about it. They need a show, they do not give him one error. You have never come out for him and say, Oh, my husband did a show in Abuja. If you really love him and you care about him, you do not pay him for the show. But you are dragging me. The same me you were chatting, even when the man was in the hospital, the same me that took him to the hospital. The only one that took him to the hospital. When daddy came back from Abuja, you said you wanted them to sell the house and said to you, I was the one that discussed with Antio Gadima so that you and daddy will settle. I took daddy to Antio Gadima house. Daddy refused to come to his own house. I took him to Gadima's house. You know that you begged daddy. Daddy said, okay, he has forgiven you. That was my doings. We had a conversation on the phone. I and Antio Gadima, that we're going to reconcile you and daddy. It was my suggestion. When you already told her that you wanted daddy to sell his property and said to you, we took daddy to our house. You came there and met daddy. You knelt down and begged him. And he said, okay, he has forgiven you for everything you've done to him. The next day, you traveled. You went for you. You went to mainland for a birthday party. Not even minding his condition. I was the one that took him to the hospital, living at hospital. The day that I brought Mr. Abel to the hospital, was anybody there with me? Was the wife there with me? I brought him to the hospital. I sent you a message on WhatsApp. I said, see that his condition is bad. Or you said, chai. I told you the hospital said we should make an initial deposit. You said, how are we going to get the money? I said, don't worry. I'll pay the money. I paid for the initial deposit. The hospital started treating him. I was going there to sleep in that hospital alone. If I go, his son will go and sleep. My brother will go. My family member was going. My, we're going. My mom will go. All of my family members were going to that hospital to go and sleep there. While we were in mainland. The picture you, you the, the baby you wear that you, you were wearing swimming pool is on your page on the 6th of October. Daddy was in the hospital that time. After the baby party, you came. You came to the hospital after like a week. After a week a week later, you told me to send you transport for you to come over to the hospital to look after your husband. I did. You came and you met us at the hospital. I was one paying all the all the all the hospital fee. When the hospital were, uh, I couldn't pay, meet up with the hospital bill anymore. The, the bills were accumulated. The doctor said, okay, daddy can be coming from home. That the same treatment that they are treating him here, he can be coming from home. When I told you this is what the doctor said, he said he should go back to my house and stay. I said, the way I'm seeing daddy in this hospital now, with the leg, the way the leg is deteriorating, the place that they put Mark has started voting. That daddy cannot go to my house and stay. That I'm afraid that he's not in a good health, he's not in a good um, state of uh, health. There's very risky for him to go and stay in my house. You said, eh, is it now that I wanted to abandon him? That's what she asked me. Do you want to abandon him now? Let him stay in your house. Eh, you see, the, the excuse she always say for him to stay in, in, my, in my house is, 
their house is not good for him, but it's good for you, it's good for your children. You were living there. I even offered, I said, okay, I would do, I would put some paper, I would fill it, I'll put bed so that he will stay in your house with you. You said, no, you should stay with me. And I called your best friend, Auntie Okadima. I said, Auntie Okadima, this is what mommy is saying, no, that daddy should come and stay with me in this condition. What do you advise? She said, Jasmine, I'll advise you as I'll advise my, my own children because you've housed my children in your house. I will not deceive you. Don't let that man go and stay in your house. If anything happens to him, she will deny you. Everybody will deny you all. Nobody will. And I'm telling I'm giving you this advice from a mother to a child. If the hospital cannot treat him from the hospital and there's no money, you should go back to his house. That's the advice until that they might give me. And I stood by it. I said, that is not going to my house now. You said, eh, what can we do? I went to the doctor. I pleaded with her. I said, give us some days. We're going to raise money and pay the hospital bill. Did anybody from anywhere supported that hospital bill? I said, they gave me money that I'm not aware of. I was not paying the hospital bill. Now, when the doctor wrote me one day, I'll put the chart, the screenshot of the chart. The doctor said, ah, we've accumulated so much, so much bill you know, that we should find solution. And I said, please. Give me um, from now to so, 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 that so, so, so day is his birthday. I'm going to celebrate his birthday in the hospital. Maybe if he celebrates in the hospital, Nigerians will see him and have mercy on him and want to support him. I went and buy cake. I coordinated everybody. We did the birthday in the hospital. Still nothing happened. The next day they wanted to discharge him. When they wanted to discharge him, you said he was going to go and stay in my house. In my own house. The same day you people refer as stranger. Husband snatcher. So at what point did you realize that I was having an affair with him? At what point did you realize that I was sleeping with your husband? I was sleeping with your husband and you still wanted your husband to stay with me, to live with me. And you love him. And you've always known that I was having an affair with him. And you wanted him to come and live in my house. So perhaps if he had, if God forbid, if he, he had died in my house, or God forbid anything bad had happened to him, I would have been in a bigger trouble right now. Nobody will believe the fact that I begged you to go and pick him from Abuja and you were conditioning me to book ticket for you and your friend. Nobody will believe the fact that I was the one that reconciled you and him. That is even talking to you today is me. I thank God his record. I would have been explaining all this thing. Nobody will believe me. I went from being your daughter to be a stranger, to be a home worker, to be husband snatcher. You're doing this thing, saying everything, forgetting that you are the woman who have a, a female child. And the way you treat other people's children is the way other people will treat your own children. I'm telling you, it's not a cause, it's karma. I'm not here to lay cause on anybody. I told the hospital, okay, oh, give me one day. I cannot take daddy to my house in this condition. And I came back, I said, ma. I'm going to cry out for help. I believe if I cry out for help, the Nigerians are going to help. I called her to, um, daddy. I called the wife together. We're on the bed. By that time, daddy's leg has already decayed to some extent. The hospital were even telling us that the way they are seeing this leg, that they will cut the leg. By that time, and they cut daddy's leg. Um, I don't know what. It got infected. And it has started decaying. That the way they are seeing this leg, if care is not taken, that they are going to cut this leg off. They started giving us time. I was so afraid for daddy. I said, ah. I don't want daddy's leg to be cut. And that was not the only um, challenge daddy was having. I don't want to start taking some health um, um, in the state of his health. But that was not the only challenges he was having in his health. It wasn't only the leg when he came back from Abuja. But the leg was the worst one because it was killing him. Pus was coming out from the, from the traditional whatever they did from it. I have pictures of all the circles, the, the mark, the things they draw under this leg. I'll put it here so even will see. Even after they, they cut the leg, you can still see the lines from the razor cut on the leg. After they, the, 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 after they amputated his leg, you can still see marks from the, the, the whatever they did in Abuja on his leg. How come somebody is talking about that? I called the wife. I called that we start on the bed. I told the, the, um, I, I, I first did the same. I, 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 what I'm saying now is what I said in the video. Nigeria, this is the condition of daddy. I've been the one paying the hospital bill. And I've been the one paying the hospital bill. And I have received of it. I cannot pay anymore. Is there any way you can support daddy? Before I cried out to, for donation, the hospital has already discharged daddy. 
that he would have gone on the wife said he should come and stay with me he would have gone and stay with me in my house and god forbid he would have something terrible would have happened to him and i would have been in greek and would have been in jail right now for something i know nothing about Then we did the video. When I called, I said, Mommy, come and do video. Say something to Nigeria. When they see that the family is in unity, they will support him. She came, she said, Oh, Nigeria, my husband is dying. Oh, he's dying. Oh, he's dying. Somebody, I said, That's not how to appeal to Nigerians. I was like, Telling her what the oh, to what? This is how you're going to say it. And then we did a video. Once that video happened, uh, got online, money started coming in. The account they were sending money to was an access bank account that didn't open. And the day he opened that account, his son was right there with him. The uh, mobile app of that account, because as, as that is, uh, when I came back, when I came back to Nigeria, that he was not operating his mobile account, most of the uh, mobile app. He, he wasn't even using mobile app. So when he went to open that, when he went to open that um, access bank, he insisted that his son would be operating the mobile app on his phone. On his own phone, you can go to Access Bank and, and make inquiry. If that that um that as um what mobile app on that particular account was ever logged into another account, it was in his own phone. He put his son in charge of that account. Anyway, before before the donations, the money that were paid into that account for maybe those kids, this kid he did with Sydney, Sydney paid the money to that account. He told his son to send money from that account to his wife. So who has been controlling the account? His son. His son has been sending up money from that account as well. His son has been in charge of that account. When the donation came, the only thing I had access to was um, the SIM card that they're using to answer call. And uh, what is it called? Alert was coming. When the alert was coming, I'll show you how many see, oh, see uh, this thing. In less than two hours, Nigerians have donated 40 million. Before you know, 60 million. In less than three days, 100 million has been donated. Before that time, she has not come and said anything bad about me. Oh. I was not a stranger. I was not a home worker. I was not a terrible person. Before that donation, I was not the living Jasmine you people are labeling me to be. When the donation money started coming, she was the one that even met me and said, okay, oh. and she was very happy. She said, the first thing she said, ah, thank God, I, 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 I was showing her from the what was it the alert the first people were using to make call because as the one answering call and people were calling to check in on, on him that is that is main phone that is phone was with the wife that is phone was with the wife and that phone that the wife is holding the main phone i was the one that put it for him the phone that i um, i was with was an old phone he was not using he left in my house that is sim card to answer call the phone for transaction where the money is coming for was his son his son was in charge of that phone. I have never, ever, 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 ever in my life controlled the account that the donations were made to. Quote me anywhere. I have, I, Choma, I have never in my life been in charge of the account that Nigerians donated money to. I have never, for one day, opened that account. I was only seeing a lot. And when the alert was coming, I was giving her every single detail. Or so many go to 100 million and that um, conversation she was saying, she wanted to buy iPhone 15. She cannot say she did not say she wanted to buy from 15. She cannot say she did not say she wanted to do her body. She cannot say she never said she wanted to buy a car with the money. Why that he was in the hospital? And my problem was, she was telling me, she was telling me knowing fully whether I was not in charge of the money. But what she was telling me was for me to go and tell the son. Because she knows if she goes and tell the son to, to um, transfer money from his father's account to her account to go and do all those things, he will not answer her. The one that she said, ah, God has blessed us, our time has come, this is our time that she's going to live her life and all of those things. I don't say anything about it. Now people are saying, I'm the one that brought this whole matter to social media. How? The first time this woman dragged me, she was the one that brought it to social media. The second one, this when this matter started, Mariam Oyakilome, you people all know Mariam Oyakilome, ask Mariam how this matter got to social media. Jasmine never went to this lover or any blog to beg them to put anything on social media. Mariam was in the first hospital when the donation started. She came to see the daddy in the hospital because she said, okay, if she wants to appeal to her fans that she's going to do her own video, that she's not going to use the video that 
people are already using. She's going to come to the hospital and do her own video and appeal to her fans. I say, okay, no problem. She came to the hospital. When she came to the hospital, she, she met daddy's wife and the wife's brother talking about selling one of daddy's property. She now called me once and she said, Jasmine, why are these people talking about selling this man's property when, when he's alive? I said, ah, I, mean, I, I don't know what to say about it. Though. You understand? They were dragging about selling one property and all of that. She now said, ah, this does not sit right with her. So I end that period. The next time, she, she I think she was in the hospital once or twice. I can't remember. Then another time when... Um, a lot of things were happening inside. So I, I told her one day, the, the brother, the, when the brother called me on the phone, I have a, the conversation. He called me one morning. He said they should go and sell, they should go and buy a car for his sister. And I say, ah, you know, I'm not the one in charge of this account. And secondly, I don't think buying a car right now is the best thing because this person you're saying they should buy a car for, she sold six of daddy's cars and then she sold her own car. She started selling things in the house because she's not working. She started selling things in the house. She started selling, she started selling almost everything in the house. So I said, if, if you said go and buy a car now, I'm not, in the, I'm not in the best position to make that decision. Let daddy get up from the hospital. Unless the, the essence of the donation was for him to, to, to get to recover. Let him recover from the hospital first. Then he can decide whatever he wants to do with the money. This thing, her brother has met me separately and told me, let's share money from that donation. If what I'm saying right now is a lie, eh? Anything I lay my hands in this life, let this backfire on me. Let her, her brother, her cousin brother, or her son, or whoever she say he is to her, um, uh, the boy, the, 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 the person her, the person she claims is her brother, or whatever she, her cousin, let him come and swear that he never told Jasmine, he never told me, let's share money from that donation. So many times, and I told him that I'm not sharing money. If daddy wants to give anybody anything from that donation, he will decide what to give anybody. I'm not sharing any money. Or should we talk about when we went to the hospital, I was the one that filled the form of the hospital. When Nigeria started donating, they used 4.5 million, um, million that we paid at Evercare Hospital and put that in ICU. When I was filling the form, they asked for Nest of King. I put the wife as Nest of King. Nest of King in the hospital means you're the one signing all the major surgery or whatever they want to do. Daddy's wife went and removed herself. Go to Evercare Hospital and find out. Did Mr. Ibu's wife remove herself from, from Nest of King or not in the hospital? And why did she remove herself from the Nest of King? Her friend told me everything. Daddy was supposed to do a surgery on a Thursday. Somebody was supposed to sign that surgery. She told her friend that this Jasmine today do, she today do, she today push herself, she today show herself. Let Jasmine be the one to sign the surgery. So if anything happens, Jasmine will take responsibility for it. She went, she removed herself from most of him and wanted to put me. She ended up putting the man's son that is not in the country. That was what led the man's son to come all the way from South Africa to Nigeria. The surgery they were supposed to do on Thursday do not happen on Thursday. They are endangering the endangering that is food even more. It will happen on Thursday. It will happen on Friday. It will happen on Saturday because the person that was supposed to sign the surgery was not in the country. He came back on Saturday and then they couldn't do the surgery during the weekend. So the surgery was later done on a Monday. Go to Evercare Hospital and find out. Go to Evercare Hospital and find out. Did she remove herself from next of kin? If she was a nest of king in the bank, if she was nest of king in the bank, would she have removed herself for whatever reason? Would she remove herself from nest of king in the bank? Let, let Jasmine come and inherit the money. No. But it was in the hospital. It was something I had to do with life. And then you remove yourself so that I will go and sign. So that if anything happens to him, they will say Jasmine was the one that signed for him. And this surgery was a 90%, 90% 30 surgery. A lot of people are saying, why did you why did you people fly the man abroad? You people are selfish, you people are greedy over all the money Nigerian donated. When daddy was taken to Evercare Hospital, how many times did you talk about flying him abroad? Even bringing quarter for inter thank for good people like Peace Square. Peace Square tried so many times in his own way. He even went as far as going to the UK embassy, going to the US embassy, trying to look for urgent urgent travel part in this thing. He even went as far as contacting some people he knows personally to use private jet and fly daddy but he said his health condition at the time he came to the hospital was not stable 
That was not stable when he came to the hospital. He couldn't fly. All they were doing, trying to do was to stabilize him. His heart, his kidney, everything. He was not stable. They were doing everything they could to stabilize him. One morning, okay, so after, after the brother talked about sharing money with me, it didn't work. They talked about buying car with, um, for her, and they said she should be patient about the buying car. The, so, the, son was, the, the, the sons were sending. From the money from that donation has been the money you people have, feed, have been feeding on. The sons have been sending you money. How much have they sent you so far from the donation money? The donation money is the money you're using to buy hair. All the weeks you bought, even the way you did on your birthday recently, you did photo shoot on your birthday. You did photo shoot on your bed, even when daddy was still ill, when he was still sick. You did photo shoot on the bed, you couldn't post it on your page. You went and post it on your daughter's page, and you were saying, your, and My mom is too busy that she couldn't post. But you did photo shoot. The same hair you use and do photo shoot, but the same hair you'll be using to come to police station. Your husband is sick. Very, very sick, but you still even have to go and do photo shoot now. The same husband you are, you are dragging me with for online that I'm trying, I'm the one. If anything happens to him, him they should hold me responsible. You need photo shoot, you put her, you put me close to the money Nigerian donated for him. You believe even have money to do your upkeep. I don't care. It's your husband's money. Do whatever you want to do with it. It's not money you need to buy new shoes, you need to buy that, you need to maintain your lifestyle. Tell me any of these things that I'm saying on this video that is a lie. One time somebody came to the hospital to donate money for daddy. I was not there. The person called me. The person called me on my phone. That is daddy's old friend that they did one movie together. He's a director. He wants to contribute to daddy's health. I gave him your number to come and meet you at the hospital. He asked you for the donations, uh, donation account. You sent him your own personal account. You told him that the donation account is not good. He sent you one million naira to your own personal account. What did you tell your friend? That uh, you're going to save what you can, where you can. If not for your friend, how would I have known that somebody sent you one million naira? That you had just one million naira? Did you ever tell me? You did not tell me. It was your friend. And then I sent the receipt for you. You said you're going to use the money to do your personal stuff. That was donation money. You used it for your personal stuff. I still did not challenge you. Why are you making it look like I'm the one in charge of this donation money? Even when you want money like this, you woke up, you carried all the police from Alago. You pack police, a lot of police people to come to my house early in the morning. The kid came to arrest me early in the morning, 6 a.m. Police people came to arrest me and 12 Mr. Evil's son. When one daddy's son came all the way from South Africa, he couldn't even live with you. He couldn't even live with you in the same house because you're giving him attitude, you're treating him like an outcast. Police came to my house 6 a.m., they took me to a labor police station. When he went to the police station, they soon told them that this phone was given to him by his father. This mother up there has been there. He has been the one doing transaction. There's a proof of that. You people allege that I stole 300 million there. You still couldn't prove that I stole 300 million there. Then you started going to chat. Say, oh, we chat this one. Who was in that chat? That you people were forcing the bank to bring that money every time, bring that money from the donation money. And he went to his father and told his father that, see what is happening, you know, the money donation and Nigerians donated for you, the donation money. This one is asking for money. This one is asking for money. And the father told him, see the particular amount of money in your account. They tell them you no longer have access to my own account. So whatever money they are using will be from the money in his own account. Nigeria, let me ask you, somebody stole 55 million naira for over a month and he did not use that money, that money is still in his account. He's, he has chances to travel, he cancelled the travel three times just to be with his father in his hospital. How is it possible? If you steal money, your next target should be running. That's why they kill me, they say, I, I, I plan to travel, travel on the 7th of of, of December, when I don't even have a stamp on my passport, I don't even have a visa on my passport. They said I'm trying planning to travel on this on the seventh of December. That's why those police people followed me and came and arrested me in my house and locked me up because they thought I was about to travel. When they came, there was no visa on my Disney. They saw even in my chat. Didn't the police see my chat? 
where I, I chatted with, I paid for my travel since August. Even the police people see in my chat, severally, where I canceled my trip to UK because of this situation. Where I was telling the agent that I can't travel now because of that situation, and yet I wanted to go with the money. When they investigated my account, did they see anybody in my account? One naira, no single naira. They cannot trace any money from, from that donation money to my account or my family account. But yet, this type of family, the entire family has been spending that money on personal need. The police has approved so many money, so many times they've approved 20 million for renting house. You people rented the house of 4 million naira. The money 20 million, cheap. They've approved 5 million naira. The money for the, that I cried out to Nigeria for donation, it won't even be used for treating the man. The money is being used for personal, 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 personal family issues. It's for the money that they are paying school fees. I don't have issue. But why are you making me your issue? If you're to come and tell Nigerians that you are dragging the phone with your husband's sons, that you want to be fully in charge of the phone, and your husband's sons say no, if, even if they give you the phone, that somebody will have to, one person will have to hold the password so that nobody will, carry, will take money from the phone without the, or the other person's notice. All you are dragging is this phone. Tell Nigeria that, oh, what you wanted is the, the donation of um, the, the phone that the transfer is being made. And that phone, you know. Why did it your husband give you that phone when he was okay? Why did it your husband make, put you in charge of his transaction? Go to Access Bank and confirm. Was that up in any other phone? Go and prove that in court. The OIG of Alabama Police Station was doing his best to manage this situation. He was doing the best he, he can. I've never seen somebody that works, works very diligently like that. You still wait every day, every day your husband is at home. You're going to the OIG's office to bother the man. You're putting pressure, you're putting pressure, you're putting pressure, 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 everything. There was never a day you did not go to police station. Even after they release us, you're wondering why did they release us. Later, you and your lawyer were the one that said you wanted to settle this matter in the police station. I said no. Since you're ready. Accuse me of stealing 300 million. You already accuse me of stealing 75 million. You accuse me of selling, stealing 55 million. Let's go to court and prove it. You people came and make a post, making me look as if they took me to court. I was the one that insisted on going to court. If you accuse me of something, you go to court and prove it. Till today, you don't want to, this matter to be taken to court. Till today, you are still asking, asking to settle this matter amicably. All you want is the phone. Let them give you the phone so that you can be doing transfer. I mean, even your, your, your husband's children, your, his sons, don't want to give you this phone is because you sold so many cars of your husband. You haven't given account of it. You don't know that you are very extravagant. You can quote me anyway. I have proof of how extravagant you are. How you spend money on unnecessary things. What the donation money meant for Barry Week? <sighs> after we still charged the case to court, or after we insisted that the case would go to court, if the case is still in court, you still kept going to the AIG's office, putting pressure on him. What do you want him to do? To carry the phone and give you? You think if it was easy, the AIG will not order? He will use his vector power and carry the phone and give you it. It was easy for him now. But he's following the law. The man is working according to the law. Even as of today, I'm sure you were still at Alabama Police Station every day. Your husband is in, 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 in the one that just come back home. Every day you're in Alabama Police Station. Okay, they said um, whatever whatever money you people want, you people agree as a family and come and tell them what you people want. They will authorize it. You still wait there, still bring lawyers. Why are you even seeing money to pay those lawyers? Because you're not working. You and I know that before this donation, you don't have no couple of your own that you can boast of. Obviously, you make you take money from the donation money to pay these lawyers. You went and said, I, I defend you. How? You defend me so many times and I haven't said anything about it. When you better call people from the village, tell them that I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the problem of the family, they should cripple me. They call me every first son to ask. If Jasmine is the problem of the family, that's how I know you people involve native doctor in this whole thing. I call Mariam. Mariam Oya Kilome. I said, Mariam, I'm afraid of my life. This is what happened. Mariam now went to this lover and complained. When Mariam was going to this lover, I told Mariam, please, do not take this thing to this lover. I don't want to drag anybody if anybody does not drag me. Even when Mariam was insisting, come to this lover, tell this lover your own side of the story. I kept, I, I kept over, I said, over, I don't want to drag anybody if anybody does not drag me. The chat is there. I said, but this is what happened. This is what happened. I don't want to drag anybody. I begged them. I said, do not post anything on my, on my behalf. 
The thing I say, I'm using very dark man to attack the woman. Was it not your brother that went to very dark man to chat very dark man? I was telling him all sorts of things about me. I have the screenshot of the chats. You people wanted to use very dark man against me, but it backfired. Did I use very dark man from Adam? The very first day that dark man came to the hospital, it was you that called me and told me that very dark man was there. Somebody called you and told you he was coming with very dark man. You're the one that told me, Mrs. Kibu. You're the one, daddy's wife was the one that told me. Now somebody, one guy, was coming with very dark man. I came to that place. I met her with very dark man and other people. That's how I met very dark man. I go find very dark man. The Yubula has been trying to destroy me. He has been sending messages to so many people. I have all those messages. When they tell, tell me what he said, I tell them my own side of the story. Then I'm the bad person. I never took all these things to social media. Never. Go to this level. I was telling you, I do not post anything. I beg you in my life, do not post anything. I don't have anything to say until anybody drags me. I saw some comments. People were saying, from Jasmine to Jasmine, the first post that I like, like just never post. No one has come on my comment session and said, I'm the one that took, uh, that took this matter to just love her. It was no one out of concern. Out of concern. Because of the things that people were doing to me. I just want to make one thing clear in this video. Number one, I have never been in charge of the donation account. Never. I was only seen a lot from the alert food. Mr. Ibu's son has been in charge. Number two, I have never stolen any 300 million from anywhere. Never was that part of any conspiracy to steal any money. Number three, Mr. Edison has come and explained how his father authorized him to send some money in, in his account and so that they will not finish the, the father's money for him. And the money is in his account. Let me tell you something. It was not as if the money was sitting somewhere and police went and discovered it. This money was in his account. When he went to police station, the first thing he did, he told police, this is the so, 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 so amount of money in my account and this is where the money is for. He told police, you know like they went to dig somewhere and they find any money anywhere or he stole any money anywhere. The police asked him, where is the money? Is the money still in your account? He said, yes, the money is still in my account. The only money that is there is that is out of it is five million dollars. Five million dollars I paid for my father's visa process because at that period they were trying to process his visa to travel. Even when the hospital was insisting that he was not fit to fly. And the evidence is on the charts. The same evidence is on the charts. Who is still 50 million naira? You had opportunity to travel. You kept canceling the travel travel. And you did not spend one million naira, one naira inside the money. What kind of a thief is that? The real issue here is you want to collect the phone your husband gave to his son to be in charge. Tell Nigerians, instead of turning things around, now you are dragging me about um Jasmine handover, Jasmine, everything. Jasmine and Mr. Ebu's son. Jasmine, is Jasmine in charge of the account? Because you know, if you drag Mr. Ebu's son, it will not sell. You will not get sympathy. They will say, eh, why are you dragging with your husband's son? You're using me to get at his children. Drop them directly now. Shady the boy has come to police. He said, I'm the one in charge. I'm the one in charge of my father's account. I have never stolen from my father. I did everything under the direction of my father. Why not drag him? Why not drag him? You are taking full responsibility for him. Why are you indicting me? And the police have been working so hard on this case, trying to follow the law. But every single day you go and you're putting pressure, multi pressure, multi pressure on the AIG so that he can do what? They really arrested me, locked me up for some days. You said you, 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 you charged me for defamation. When have I ever come online and said anything about you? After everything that you're doing, you never come online and said anything about you. When police checked it, there was no case of defamation for me to you. But you are the one defaming me. When your husband was in the hospital, you did, you did all 15 interviews on Facebook. You did not do interview or you did insta interview on Facebook. You did interview with Uche Mado. You did interview with, with j -Pak. You did so many interviews. j -Pak was coming to defame me from you. j -Pak, you, you were bringing j -Pak to the hospital. He was defaming me from you. j -Pak called me a prostitute. He called me so many things. The pack was insulting me so many times. He came to the police station. He apologized. After apologizing, he still went back and defamed me. Courtesy of you, Mrs. Evil. Courtesy of you. So many people. Even Madame Doris. You went to Madame Doris. You destroyed me in front of Madame Doris. Even without hearing from me, Madame Doris went online and destroyed my character. It was later after she called me.
She and Angela Okoye called me on the phone and they were insulting me, insulting me. Later, Madame Doris called me. When she called me, she heard my own side of the story. She said, ah, it wasn't even that she heard my own side of the story. When she called me, I went to her house. I showed her everything, all the evidence, because I don't talk without evidence. She said, ah, Mr. Every wife has come also. This woman lied to us that these people wanted to use this donation money and travel. But as these people have finalized their travel journey before December, since July, since August, they finalized their travel. Why is she making it look like they stole the money to travel? Mrs. Ibu, come and swear that you do not know that I was traveling since August. Come and swear. Swear on any of anybody close to you. Come and swear that anything I'm saying on this video is a lie. Come and say, I'm not doing a video so that you cannot respond. Come and respond. And I dare you to sue me for defamation because you've been defaming me. You sue me for defamation, I will cut that sue you times 10 of it. You've been defaming me. You did so many interviews on Facebook. I have all of them on my phone. So many interviews. You told people that I came to destroy your home. The first time anybody ever defamed me was you. You didn't use me in that family. You used me. If there was anybody that was you, it was me. Yet I've never come online to beg Nigeria for sympathy or for them to support me. I don't even need that sympathy. I don't need that sympathy. I'm moving forward. Anybody can say what they want to say. Anybody can say what they want to say. When you see the, the, the issue of theft, you should go to court and prove it. Until any court sentenced me to be a criminal, nobody has any right to call me a thief. Did I trace any money to my account? Was there any money found in my account? But I have evidence of you, of you, siphoning one million there. I have the evidence. All the money, if they want to go by who is really wasting the money for donation, Nigeria, you see that donation money, eh? Coach should, coach should be in charge of that donation money. You should make sure that money is used for Mr. Ibu's health because that's the reason why I came out and cried. That money should not be used for buying phone, for buying hair, for buying shoe. That money should not be used for selfish reason because Daddy cannot even speak for himself right now. I'm going to hold my peace here until anybody gives me any reason to say. And I'm going to be putting all the evidence so that we can end all this nonsense once and for all.